So here we are, and it's going to be a big story today. I've watched Alan's documentary appearance, Strange Ways, Riot, Ringleader, they pegged him as. When I was a kid, late teens, two biggest things on the news that I can remember in my head to this day were the poll tax riot in London and the Strange Ways prison riot. This is a Manchester prison. Like seeing these guys on the roof day after day after day. Wondering what's going on. So, and we've got Peter Wildman here today, is co-interviewing. You guys have asked for more of those, so here he is. Um, Alan, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you for inviting me. About two-thirds into your book Thank right you. now. Alan's book, not just a riot situation, two prison escapes as well. Highly recommend you go on Amazon and get life in strange ways. I've got it on my Kindle right now, so it's available worldwide as an ebook and a paperback. And the link to Alan's book and all of his socials is gonna be in the description box below this video. So we generally start out with an action scene in this podcast, Alan. Um, can you just take us to the chapel and just slowly go through what happened that day before the riot kicked off? Yes, um, well, the riot kicked off on the 1st of April, 1990. Um, actually, everybody thought it was April Fools, but it wasn't. It wasn't. It was no. a coincidence that it fallen on that day. Um, mm -hmm. It was more or less pre-orchestrated, mm -hmm. you no, know, by a very few, and nobody had expected to go to the extent it went. To be perfectly honest, but it 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 it, it, it was beneficial that whether it went to that extent or not, that it got out what was happening in the prison system. And as a result of the riot taking place was about the conditions within the prison system. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of discontent, how people were being treated, conditions, etc. And it came to fruition that enough was enough. We've had enough of this. Something has to be done about the situation. Sacrifices have to be made. Consequences have to be taken on the chin. And on that day in the chapel, um, I was one of the few who was prepared to make that sacrifice. And I knew that the moment it kicked off, and it did kick off, it kicked off really bad. Um, and a couple of the lads stood up immediately with sticks. Yeah. One particular individual made a speech um, criticising the prison system. And I think that was the cue for everybody to go, let's go for it. But, it, but, but the few that went for it spurred those that didn't know nothing about it. And I think that was coupled with the frustrations and the anger because yeah. of the situation. And um, kicked off in the chapel. So that guy grabbed the priest's microphone, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he took the microphone. Then, then the priest at that time was giving a sermon called some blessings of their hearts. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, I'm not religious. No, I'm not by the stretch of the imagination. I'm an atheist yeah. by nature. Um, and was there, he, was there an atmosphere? Yeah, you could cut the atmosphere. But I think, well, I don't think I know now from reading the transcripts, I mean, the um, depositions at the time, I was waiting to go on trial, two trials, that they've already received information from a grass that it was going to kick off in the chapel. I was going That's to say, why, I'm surprised it even got through because there's a lot of people talking about Ah, well, I'll come to that, yeah. to be perfectly honest, um, because there was more prison warders in attendance what there usually is. Ah, of course. And furthermore, there was no sex offenders on the right-hand side of the chapel at the top. Well, they usually are. Which they usually is in yeah. attendance. Um, but hence, that didn't stop the, the altercations, that didn't stop it proceeding to what it did. Um, that didn't stop a few screws getting a couple of hidings. Mm -hmm. um, that didn't stop um, the vicar getting a black eye. Well, the ones who got the hidings must have deserved it. They must have give hidings out. Of course. Well, whether they deserved it or not, what you've got to understand that they're all in it together. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't exempt you because you've not done nothing untoward to me as a prisoner that you've stood there and are uh, quite uh, audacious to ignore what's happened to a prisoner. You're watching all your screwmates, you know, being abusive to mm -hmm. a prisoner. Um, probably, and I would say yes, um, assaulting a prisoner. 
So it makes you look better than them. No, I was. If you've got any models, any values about you, intervene. Yeah. As an individual. Stand up and say something. Yeah, stand up and be a man. Yeah. Go against the odds. I was in Walton in 92 and um, I seen the Mufti squad there going on people. And they were were ruthless, really, like smashing their heads against the wall and everything. Disgusting behaviour. It is. Disgusting behaviour. Dragging them down the metal stairs, you know, it's just like just threads banging on the stairs like that and they drag them to the hole. It's it, just wrong, it's just wrong. Yeah, it, it's wrong, but unfortunately, because they find, they signed the um, official secret art, you know, gives them immunity for any form, any form of prosecution. That's exactly what it does. Yeah. And that's wrong, because he's giving them a ticket, do what you want with prisoners. They'd roll you up with mattresses and kick the shit out of you, so you don't actually bruise from the outside. Yes. Because yes. pr- prior to the riot, you'd ex- uh, um, experienced extreme violence and extreme racism on yourself from the guards. Absolutely. I mean, from the onset, I went into the prison system. Don't get me wrong, I didn't enter the prison system with the intent of being violent, gratuitous, violent. That, that wasn't my intention. It, it, it didn't even enter my conscience. You know, I went in there on my man because I committed a crime. But as a result of their already set behaviour... Bully boy tactics, intimidation tactics, exploitation tactics, which they carry, they thought they could portray this, these three things, on myself. And you're not one to sit down and take it? No, don't get me wrong, I was a young lad. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't expecting that, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. No, I'll be honest. Um, and I was segregated from my co-accused. Um, placed down the segregation unit. Now, let me explain something about the segregation unit that had their own psychological rule outside the rule box, and it was this. Don't walk across the main floor. Walk adjacent to the wall on the two tiles. Um, I wasn't aware of that. It was my co-accused cane. Um, and as we're walking across the floor, a couple of the prison warders became very abusive, derogatory, racist, in other words. Yeah. And I know it sounds hypothetical what I'm going to say, but I don't think it was directed at myself or Kane. But obviously it was. Kane was placed in the cell. I was marched further down the corridor. And just as I was entering the cell, a screw came behind me, punched me in the back of the head, and said, you merging black, black, black bastard, and just slammed the door. And don't get me wrong, my initial reaction was, was one of, I was stunned. I was frightened. Yeah. I was anxious. I was only a young lad myself. Later on, you got years angry. Of, 19 years of age. Yeah. You know, in an environment that was not alien, but alien in certain respects. And... Scary, isn't it? It was scaring. And it, it, it was the un, unknown, what was going to happen once that door opened, what's going to transpire. But something inside me said to me, I'm not prepared to put up with this. Mm. I'm not. Even though I have the negative feelings, even though I was frightened, etc., I said, no, I'm coming out fighting. And if this is the way it's going to be, so be it. And when that door opened, I was outnumbered, but I came out fighting. And from that point on, it spiralled out of control for the next 13, 14 years. So going back to the chapel then, Microphone's been grabbed, there was a mood on the yard, the sex offenders aren't there, and now what are the prisoners doing? You said they picked the sticks and balaclavas, is it, Nick? Yeah, yeah, there was balaclavas put on, there was sticks drawn, Yeah, you know. Um, there was warders being booted, punched, you know. Um, there was, um, basically, the chapel was being demolished, to put it in a finer term. Now, everyone was there, would they... Would they all gain for it, like, oh, people there uh, just because they sort of got roped in? I, I would say they got roped in. Yeah. Some knew, some didn't know. But you got to realise on the whole, collectively, a lot of prisoners carry a lot of frustrations, anger and bitterness because of the confinement, you know, um, because of the resentment how they're being treated. So this was a golden opportunity to vent it without no repercussions at that moment. And not seeing the loved ones and their jobs. All that comes into play. I mean, yeah. the, 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 the virtual imprisonment, it, it carries a lot of, how can I put it, constraints. 
you know, and the fact that you can't see your family, as you rightfully say, you can't do what you want to do. You're confined. No. It carries a heavy, 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 heavy burden on that person. And it doesn't distract from the fact that, equally so, their next of kins are carrying that burden and all. Yeah, because it's not just you doing your time, it's the family. But you don't realise that, do you? Um, I think they do realise that, but some people are, 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 are sublime to it. Yeah, yeah. You know, they sort of like, I mean, personally myself, myself, I've learned to switch off my emotions when I was in prison. I turned down a ballistic. You go prison mode? Yes. Yeah. You know, um, but that was my choice. And no doubt there's other prisoners who do similar or less, but it's one way of coping with the situation. I'd make sure I'd never have a girlfriend when I was getting sent down. I'd make sure I'd have, I wouldn't be going through that, oh, she dared join me, what's she doing and all that. Because, I mean, you can sit in your bunk and You drive yourself mad. Head. You go, oh, yeah. You drive yourself mad. But that's that person's fault, the individual. Yeah. He's insecure. Yeah, exactly. I can't blame, I can't blame the girlfriends and the wives. No. You know, they didn't put you in that situation. You put yourself in that situation. Exactly. So you've got to cope with it the best way you can. And you've got to be prepared for the consequences. Because you know it's going to come. Of course. Yeah. Yes. No. So they pick the sticks up, Bally's on, guards are shitting themselves, they're getting out of there. How does it get from the chapel to the roof? Um, how it got to that situation? Because at that time, they were doing reconstruction <sighs> in the central rotunda. So from the floor to the top of the rotunda, which was 80 feet, yeah. there was scaffolding all the way around. Right. They made it so, nice and handy for you, didn't they? Precisely. Might as well give you the ladder. <laughs> um, people presume that a week prior to that, two lads already got on the roof. You know, and that was, um, that preempted the main riot. Yeah. But that had nothing to do with it. They were just doing their own demonstration. Mm -hmm. But equally so, if these two can get up, anybody else can get up. Give you food for thought. Of course. Yeah. How did it feel when you first got on the roof? To be honest, I was terrified. Yeah. First time I'd been that up, up that height. Um, How long had you already served at that point? At that point, I'd served, let me get this right for you, ten, ten and a half years then. Ten and a half years, yes. okay. Um, I was, once ex exiting onto the roof, I was holding onto the roof like a pussy cat. If we had a cause, you would have went through the... I'd be... Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was, I was... I'd freeze, I think. Well, uh, at one point, I did. Yeah. Because, you know, my perception of the height was like, well, I'm going to fall off. Um, but somehow I managed to sort of like crawl and scramble myself to the end of the roof, A-wing roof it was, because yeah. I was the only person on A-wing roof. But as a result of that, the skylights you know, on top of the roof, my hand went through once, so I ended up getting an keloid because my hand went through because, <sighs> and the reason why it went through because I thought I was slipping, I went bang yeah. to hold on. Um, but it didn't pain, even though I know I'd done it. A um, lot of blood. What I was more concerned about when I was stood up at the end of A Wing Room, my pants are split, <laughs> unbeknown to me. <laughs> you know? So while I'm giving it all that. Flashing. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I went, oh, right, I better go and change these pants. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take for the media to get there? Within seconds. I watched Within them seconds. come. Within, within minutes, I exaggerate. Yeah, minutes. Yeah. Um, I watched them all came to a street, I think it's called um, Juicy Streets. Mm. And while I was there, and I seen all the press pulling up, oh. you know, buffing each other out the way to for the better position, so to speak. Um, I seen the police come in, um, and I went from A wing roof to F wing roof then, and um, had a little bit of altercation with the governor down below, and more or less he he was sort of like gesticulating, we're gonna do your arms and legs, in other words. And more or less I said to him, well, who's got your prison now? I've got your prison, so fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Oh, one, of the, one of the headlines was that the prisoners had got hold of the sex offenders and were throwing them off balconies and killing sex offenders and there was up to 20 dead. Was there any truth in any of that? No, there was no truth in the fact that there was 20 dead. There was truth in the fact that sex offenders were getting good hidings. Yeah. But people have to understand this point now. If they had word during the course that week it was going to kick off, and no sex offenders were permitted into the chapel, but it kicked off, and sex offenders were all confined on E wing, but the sex offenders on C wing were evacuated immediately. 
That was orchestrated by them to lead them to the long fate. They left them for the reason. Absolutely, of course they did. Yeah. They're they're, they're just. I'm not. Probably left the worst of the sex offenders of the worst. Well, no, because the these were these these ones on E wing were on remand. The ones on C wing down below have been convicted already. Yeah. No, and from what I read of the um, depositions, you know. Some of the sex offenders, which I have no sympathy with anyway, no, I don't will, uh, will, 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 will be more than the fact I want to attend the chapel. And the excuse was saying, well, we advise you not to attend the chapel. You know, but hypothetically and ironically, they moved them out, but they leave those ones to the fates. So that tells me it was orchestrated. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They set them up. And don't get me wrong, I don't have no sympathy for them. You know, you're in for kids, you're in for women. You take it on the chin, you get what you're going to go into you. Um, but it was orchestrated by the system. So in the book, they actually charge you during the riot with the murder of a sex offender. Yes, yes. But like, as we know, the cops just put every charge in the book on you. Absolutely. See what mud will stick. It's a, it's a bullshit game they play. What actually happened there? Um, well, I was quite annoyed about the situation. Um, during, the course of the, during the course of the interview, and you mentioned one of the points about the top poll tax riots, and I became in an altercation during the interview. And my point was, was, was this, that you let this riot continue for the length of time, given the fact there was only seven individuals holding strange ways, which is a vast and complex building, yeah. to ransom. Impossible. You know, you, you look at it aerial view, geographically, and then you, you equate it with seven people, not on this, not in, not in, not in, not, not as long as you can breathe. They could have sent helicopters for people straight away. And I said they? to them, you let this right continue deliberately. And they said, what do you mean? I said, what happened the previous evening down London? And they're all scratching their heads like uh, monkeys. Yeah. And I said, let me enlighten you. I said, the poll tax riots. And I said, and I said it was just by coincidence that the following morning, it kicks off in one of the biggest prisons, strange ways. Right? <clears throat> and I said, which is more containable? The poll tax riot or strange ways? It was the strange ways. Yeah. And all the diversion went from the poll tax riots to the strange ways. They wanted it off the poll tax riot, didn't they? And that's they? why you continued it on. Yeah. Yeah, of course. And I firmly believe that. Because I believe that for one moment that if strange ways hadn't kicked off, the poll tax riots would have spread. What happened on day one exactly? What was the notable things? And how many prisoners were on the roof and rioting? And there was quite a few prisoners on the roof, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. I can't give you a specific number. Yeah. But in total, it was like um, 1,664 or 68 prisoners in that jail. And it wasn't designed for that amount of people. No. It's single cell. But in some of the cells, you had two people tooed up, three people tooed up in a single cell. You know, so it, it, it was a... It was a calamity waiting to happen. You can't, you can't put, you cannot get so many sardines in a in a in a, in a tin. It's not right for the other prisoners either. Is it overcrowding? I mean, you're actually doing your time. You're serving your time. You should be able to, you humane enough to be able to move. You of know, course. when you got two or three people in your cell, it's just it's horrible, isn't it? It's, it, like, living, it's like living in a toilet with two yeah. dudes, isn't it? Well, it's not. It's not the mere fact that you got two to three people in the cell. <coughs> It's the mere fact you got two to three strangers in the cell. Yeah. That is the pivotal point. And the reason why I say that, because I don't know you. So if you smoke, I go, you don't smoke in this cell. You're going to get the hunt with me straight away. Oh, I, I, I need to take, take a dump in that bucket. I don't think so. Not in this cell. Not while I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Creates a lot of friction. And I'm very, very surprised that oh, the number of years that you had these two to three in the cell, that there wasn't more fatalities so it shows a lot of tolerance by the prisoners in that respect. It even may, it may create a lot of friction in the cells, but a lot of tolerance. In America, I see people getting battered for the bottom bunk. <laughs> they were getting yeah, dragged, yeah. dragged off the bottom bunk, you know what I mean? Yeah, the bottom bunk is like the most coveted one, isn't it? The convenient it? one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to jump from the top because me knees. Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> so on day one then, what kind of behaviour... How are the guards reacting? What are the prisoners doing? Are things getting damaged? Yeah, no, I mean, um, the, it's like the demolition squad. You sent in over a thousand prisoners who work for the demolition company. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so what they're doing is dismantling strange ways bit by Toilet, bit. Sinks, everything. Anything, anything that was removable, anything that was breakable, you know, 
despite the fact that some of them were using bare hands, you know, yeah. it, 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 it's coming to that point where it, it's leg old time. Let's go for it. <laughs> yeah. And and that I understand. I won't take that away from him. I imagine what, the adrenaline was really high at that point. Of course. Though. I mean, people's emotions were, you know, I mean, my emotions were like, wow. Yeah. And it's like a vestige of freedom. Even though you're not free, I know it sounds nonsense what I'm saying, but but you're free right when now. When I got on that, when I got, absolutely yeah. when I got on that roof and I seen the vastness of Manchester, it, it does take your breath away. Yeah, because all I've seen is is bricks, mortar, and bars, and that's that's very narrative in your perception. Now I'm on the roof and it's like. Wow, it's like a painting, an oil painting. And he's got your warden threatening you, but at the end of the day, you got his prison. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So slates are raining down. Are you joining in with the slate throwing on the no, guards? No, that's one of the things I wouldn't do. And I don't want to say that 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 I'm, I'm angelic like I'm not. Mm -hmm. The reason why I wouldn't do that because I wouldn't set myself up. The minute I done that, I'm giving them justification. We got you know, bastard lord. They got me anyway. Yeah. You know, they got me through the conspiracy. They got me on conspiracy, not factual. You know, see all this charge that they brought in. You conspired. Conspired on bullshit. What? You give me the evidence. Give me the facts. You're not giving me the facts. That's what we got sent down. You know? Conspiracy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so that's what they got me on. But the reasons why I wouldn't participate in throwing that, like, you know, like David and Goliath, mm. you know, because I knew I'm setting myself up. I wanted to get the message out politically. And that's why I went, okay, smart asses, I shall use better. That's why I went from down below to obtaining a blackboard, chalk, and writing the political messages and exposing the prison system. Were well, you trying to yell the messages out in the beginning? Yeah, but my voice went. Well, that's you were playing I, Barry Mandelow. I was watching that. <laughs> and I was, I, what did you put up? Was it Step Up? I Got the Power. That was brilliant. Yes, that, that, came, that, that came in, must have yes. Been, when that come on, I got chills up my spine, so I was thinking, ah. Oh. I was buzzing when I saw that bit yeah. in the dark, yeah. <laughs> and they're all just like rave dancing on the roof. Yeah, yeah. But when you were trying to shout down to the reporters and that, the police starts actually beeping the horn, so there was... Yeah, it was ridiculous. To... If, from the onset, that came into play. Yeah. You know, because they realised, because the press were just across the way. Um, on Lord Street, believe it or not, it's called. And they were in a, they were in a warehouse and it was um, many months and solicitors were down below. They were on that roof. So it was more convenient to shout from F-wing roof across to them or the end of A-wing roof across to them. It's ironic, isn't it, on Lord Street? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it should have there. happened, yeah. Right. It's to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but once I started doing that, Another prisoners, don't get me wrong, uh, 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 it was just me. Yeah. Um, they thought, we'll drown you out by music and beeping horns, like saying the helicopters are above, bum, 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 bum. You know? And it was only by tuition that I thought, okay, there's got to be another way of getting this across. And that's why I went down to the classroom, seen the blackboard, my light bulbs come on. I mean, blackboard, chalk, that's fine, up we go. I nailed it on. And I said, and the first thing I written on, I said, press now open. That's brilliant. As soon as I done that, as soon as I done that, all the noise ceased because they knew we're on an old winner now. Yeah. You can expose it. It's coming out. Yes. And there was a cameraman across the way on a cherry picker. And there's two books I got from the governor's office. And they were complaint books by prisoners. And the governor used to sign them. <clears throat> one was the medical complaints book and the other one was the um, correspondence book. Um, correspondence of letters, yeah. Um, stoppage of letters, it was called. And I'll give you the example. Ends one young prisoner's complaining that the screws have given him an hiding and he's full of bruises and he was due a visit. And they stopped the letter, and the response to that from the governor was, um, Don't let this prisoner have a visit or let it go out and see his bruises are young. That's what they do. And this is what I was expecting. This is what I was exposing, chapter and verse, yeah. And the cameraman across the way. I was holding the book up, opened the page, and the technology obviously was zooming in. As soon as he's done that, he used to put his phone up and say, I've got it, thanks, and it went, nice one, thank you very much. <laughs> so they were actually working with you as the cameramen then? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, I've always said, you know, like, um, you know, the press civil street can make it a break, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and some of them are going to dehumanise you, 
which they do, but some of them are going to remain neutral and look at it for what it really is. But if you get a couple on your side, it's good. Of course. You know? Yes, you would. And I did, we did get some on our side. Yeah. You know, very few fine in between, you know, but it, it, it was irrelevant when we had them on our side and we didn't. Mm. What was done was done and it was going worldwide. And as I've always said, because it went worldwide, it wasn't confined. Like, like I've been in five prison riots, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Strange Way was, was my third. I was involved in two more after that. <clears throat> and the reason why this was different from the other four is because it was going worldwide. It, the, 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 the government was under the microscope because there's nothing they like to portray better that like we do things right in this country. Yeah. But now you're being exposed that, well, hold on, that's not entirely true according to all this. Yeah. The rights you've been in, have they actually all been towards the government and towards the screws or has some of them been like racial or sort of things? In, in um, on their <clears throat> I, suppose, I suppose in reality, it's all coupled. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. You can't separate one from the other, you know. Um, but the, the, they've all got their own level of... Um, Level of discontent, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, um, Strange Wizard was in a different category, you know, but the other riots were in a different category. Yeah. You know, they, had all, they, they all had the purposes, they all had the justifications, etc. cetera. Um, it's, it's just that Strange Ways puts it in a different category up there because it wasn't about that prison only. It was about the prison system on the whole. Well, the whole world seemed strange, right, yes. didn't they? Yes, yeah. And, and, and it did justification. As you know, it brought in the Wolf Inquiry, which inevitably I met one of the team who came to see me from the Wolf Inquiry. Um, Miss Tucker, she was quite taken aback the fact that what I was putting on the table to her, the revelations about the prison system, she was quite shocked. Mm. And she said, oh, my God, I, I, I didn't realise that the prison system operates in such a, 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 a manner... <clears throat> um, and as you know, the Wolf Inquiry made the recommendations. Well, if you hadn't shown it, do you, it would have come out, would it? No, no. I mean, uh, let's be honest about the situation. If it wouldn't have been for... If, if the strange reason would have kicked off and it would have lasted a couple of hours, yeah. it would have been brushed under the carpet. Yeah. You know, but because it lasted 25 days, couldn't brush it under the carpet. I think it was, the, <clears throat> it was the timing where, like you say, the poll tax, and they wanted something to divert from that. And then did, but they let the strange ways go on far too long, didn't they, really? Yes, and it was deliberate. Yeah. And I, I can say that hand on eye, it was deliberate that they let it continue. You know, they had the resources to nip this in the bud. And anybody that said they didn't, come on, please. You're talking about the government here. <clears throat> they can nip anything in the bud any time they want but they wanted to divert from that poll tax riots. Yeah. I'm curious, we saw like you guys in the daytime and stuff, but when darkness came, what was it like? Like, how would you sleep and stuff like that? What happens at night? Right, nighttime. Nighttime yeah. was quite daunting and haunting. Yeah. You know, because <laughs> the building went dark, you know, um, and the place that we designated as our camp, um, we made home shift fires and we made one in an empty cell so it warmed it up so you can be in there when it get really cold. So you've got part of the prison secured <clears throat> inside that you, yes, you're yes, camped so you, out in? Inside the prison was all barricaded up. I see, the whole prison. Yeah, yeah, barricaded okay. up. So if they tried to come in, you know, inevitably you, you remove this from the barricade, it's going to tumble, make a noise. Yeah. You know, so it's like... So it's your own playground entirely, isn't it, really? Yeah. yeah, I mean, we had the run in the mill. Yeah. We went, uh, went underground through the tunnels, but they were blocked off. Did you guys have the keys as well? From the onset, I had the keys. Yeah. Right, from the onset, when it kicked off in the chapel, I retained a set of keys off a screw, snatched them off him, <laughs> bang. Um, but don't get me wrong, uh, you know, I, I, I don't sort of like, mm -hmm. glot about the fact that before I took the keys, I gave him a dig in the head <laughs> yeah. to let him know. Um, and he cowered as soon as I digged him in the head. And his other two colleagues were trying to hide behind the door. And well, the amount of times they've digged people in there, do you course, know what I mean? Of course. You had that coming. They must you? have been shitting it, thinking they were going to get trapped in there and get stabbed and all kinds. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the mere fact that, you know, like I say, Skew's got digs, one got a good hiding by the YPs, which you've seen. Yeah. You know, but probably got that because he's treating them, mistreating them. You know, bully boy tactics, I call it. 
um, young prisoners. Now the young prisoners, the hands, it switched. Mm -hmm. So they were kicking the shit out of him. But I just turned my head to say, you got your reasons. I mean, the young fans, they're looking for any for excuse for the fights anyway, don't they? So, yes. You know, they, 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 it's just like, um, it's like gladiator school, isn't it? Yeah. They all want to prove <clears throat> there's going to be someone. But how can I, you got to different trick between the youngins then back in the 1980s and the youngins now. Different mentality. Well, then they'd fight. Now they'd just stab you. <laughs> yeah. But what I'm saying now, they're a bit more upfront now. Yeah. Yeah. A bit more like egotistical. Where go back in the 80s, they carried that, but a bit more reserved with it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a difference. It's more like football hooligans type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So could you sleep your first night as your adrenaline just going crazy? Oh, no, I don't think anybody slept. Nobody slept. No, there was a lot of camaraderie going on. Yeah. You know, joviality jo jo going on, people singing, playing guitars on the roof. There's campfires everywhere. You know, because um, they had access to the kitchen. Did they have uh, access to medical? <clears throat> Medicals, the medical um, room, so to speak, designated on the road. Um, Rotunda, the third landing, um, that was broken into. Everything had disappeared. The canteen that was designated on the Rotunda landing, that was on the twos. All the stocking that was taken. Are you thinking this might go on, and we got to make that last? The food. Yes. Yeah. That was one of my main concerns, to be perfectly honest, because during the evening, and like I said, it was campfires, people, jovial attitude, camaraderie, etc., um, and. I actually see you no know, provisions from the canteen being discarded over, just thrown over. Yeah. And I became quite a bit annoyed about that because I thought, up until that point, you didn't get all That's this stuff. Food. Now you've got this stuff. <laughs> <clears throat> and what you're doing, you're showing, you're showing disregard for what you're missing. Yeah, yeah. So we went to the um, canteen area. There was a few boxes left. and rounding them up. Thought, right, we need to save all this. But there was a lot of provisions in the kitchen. And one of the things that surprised me about the kitchen was this, right? And one part of the kitchen carried that many steaks, that many pork chops, which you don't get. That must be for the screws, <laughs> wasn't it? Of course it is. Yeah. Of course it was. You what know? was your first steak like then on the roof? <laughs> well, you know what, right? I lived our steaks for the full week yeah. and chops for the full week. <laughs> hey, I've never so many steaks and chops in my life. <laughs> hey, Gordon Ramsay could step to the side <laughs> because I was a chef that week. <laughs> I imagine your first few days you got to be up and down because you're not used to that rich food, are you? Um, yes and no. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've been in the prison system quite a while up to yeah. that point. <clears throat> And when you're in the dispersal system, you can cook your own food. Yeah, yeah. So you had access to certain foods, but you can't have access to certain foods in the local. Got yeah. That's the difference, you know. So um, I was used to it, but not that much, that quantity. Yeah, that quantity. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how many nights then before you actually did sleep? Um, didn't really sleep. Um, I could say that uh, uh, my sleeps were sort of like restless, um, sleep up in here. Oh, that, like, yeah. on and off, on and off. Are you thinking <clears> they're going to come in the night when there's going to be an assault? Absolutely. You can't really drop your guard. You can't become complacent. Did you do rounds? Like, you get a few hours y kipping out, stay up? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And there's always one or two people awake throughout the night. You know, but you slept lightly yourself. You know, one ear shut, one ear open, in other words. Yeah. The slightest noise is like, oh, I hear that one. I better go and check it out. <clears throat> but I used to sleep anywhere. You know, I wasn't bothered because I was used to sleeping on the floor anyway. Just give the speed freaks the speed, let them stand on guard, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but yeah, sleep was difficult, but I think because the adrenaline the first evening and the first couple of days kept people awake anyway. It would do, wouldn't it? Well, <clears throat> how soon is it before they send negotiators in? Um, on the third. Third day. The third day they sent negotiators in. The reason why I say that, because... As you know, Strange Ways has, has four landings. Mm -hmm. And on the fourth landing above it, between 10, 15 feet, there's a wire mesh separating that landing from the main roof. Suicide. <clears throat> no, no, that's down below. Got yeah. Got so yeah. people can't get above onto the roof. Yeah. But people that by that time were already on the roof. So they had access to that wire netting above 
Mm. It wasn't netting, it was um, metal. Yeah. Like reconstruction, what you put in concrete. <clears throat> and on that day, the third day in particular, um, the CNR team came in on E-wing. Oh, each landing, bang, bang. Which was quite fool, foolhardy by them because there they are on the landing, like cockroaches, shoulders to shoulder. You aren't going any further than point A because point B is all blocked off. Oh. So what's the point? <clears throat> They're all in the right shields. The wrong and right gear got the shields. Their lads up above them and all I rated now. Access to the scaffolding poles. They pick up the scaffolding poles and they're launching them down on top of them. Did the being best just sending one or two in to talk, wouldn't they? Well, well, as a result of that, because they realised that the situation was quite volatile now. Yeah. They made know. it that way, though. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Whoever was the, the tactical they what they were leader, doing. whoever was the tactical leader, like, let's send them in. It's like let's sending them into a house on fire. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and I think they, I think they began to realise that when certain, um, well, warders were being injured. You know, scaffolding poles with it in the shields, shattering the shields, the yeah. them. You know, you're talking 18, 20 foot scaffolding poles being dropped from my height, speared down on top of you. They were going through the landing floor. Wow. wow. You know, that, 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 that's how precarious that's and dangerous it is. That's scary it is. Yourself, of course it? it is. Yeah. You've got to watch your head. Well, not only watch your head, watch your limbs. Yeah. Anything, watch, watch your heart, because if it's going to hit your head, it's going to go right through you. Yeah. Um, so to cut a long story short, Somewhere along the line, it all quelled down, you know, and um, there were pockets of people talking, screws and prisoners for the meshing at each other, shouting up and down. Um, and it just so happened that I happened to be near two prisoners at the time. One was Taylor and was, one was called John Hughes. Mm. And two of the um, POA, Peter Hancock and Dave Rigby, we saying, look, can somebody come down to us, talk to us? So we just made that respected decision. Um, we'll go down to them and talk. Because, <clears throat> how can I put it? You can't have a major incident without negotiations. No. Oh, it's all nonsensical. Do you think they'd nab you, though? It did cross my mind the first time to be perfectly honest. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, do you think I'll send someone else to see how that goes? <laughs> <laughs> But if you think about it logically, if they would have nabbed me, there would have been no more negotiations by any prisoner. Exactly, yeah. You know, so, so the, uh, it's like they have to show good faith to... Because you're the guy they want to talk to in the way, isn't it? You know I mean? you're to just... a degree, yeah. I mean, they'd be all tear down, but he was, he was... He was too... How can I put it? Put it he was too hyped up. Yeah, but... as Erratic heads... in his manner. You need somebody who's going to be a bit more calm, yeah. you know, and put the proposals across in a logical and sensible and rational manner. As heads go, though, <clears> you, <throat> you were the, the sensible head. You were the one. You had <clears> enough <throat> brain to go and get the chalkboard. You had enough. You got enough about you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But I didn't want. I didn't want the incident. I didn't want people's behaviour to distract away from what the right was about. Exactly. Yeah. Or we would have all been made a laughing stock. Yeah. This is what it's about. It's a serious incident. I understand what you're doing, but don't distract from what it's about. You know, because it's what, political. What, what, what would have been the it? point? Yeah. Then? It, it, it might not done all this. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yes, and we went down. Was escorted by um, Peter Hancock, Dave Rigby, and another warder called um, Brian Nicholson. He was he was a part of the CNR team. Used to train him. <clears throat> and as I jumped down, I went, "Oh, we meet again, do we?" Because I seen him through the visor. Yeah. <laughs> I met him in the past <laughs> and the struggles. <clears throat> um, got down to the bottom of E Wing and they set up um, a base in um, the hospital, the old complex hospital on the end of E Wing. And you could cut the atmosphere with a knife as they're escorting us. Yeah. And, you know, some of these other warders in the CNR were saying, what are you doing with them scumbags? Shouldn't talk to them, let's get in and do things. You know, <clears throat> so the situation was quite tense. Went in and the, and, and, and the thrust of the, you know, like negotiations were, this is what it's about. Conditions, treatments. Also, we want assurances. You have to have assurances under the, cir under the circumstances because... What's going to happen to when prisoners are exiting? Are you going to duff them in? Yeah. Stamp all over them? That isn't going to be the situation here. Let them exit in a in a in a in a in a decent manner. 
you know, by all means, you know, usually be straight on the land, just grabbing the wrist, escort them to wherever, and on the way to the next prison. <clears throat> um, also, we want um, an independent um, member of the press coming in to give that extra security when you're escorting prisoners out. Make sure nothing that untoward is going to happen. Yeah. Yes. Um, and their frustrated there, the argument was, look, we're concerned about the young prisoners, you know, which I understood. They're mm. only young lads. They caught up, the the, the lights up. And as I turned around and said to him, nobody's forced to stay in this incident. Anybody can leave there at their own free will any given time. Was the people still locked down? Like, was people <gasps> who didn't want to know and just stayed in the cell? Everybody was unlocked eventually. Really? Everybody with the two sets of keys they were. Uh, I had a set in the beginning. That must have took forever. Yeah, <laughs> but I didn't go around open the doors, believe it or not. No. I had a set of keys. My initial plan was to try and escape, but yeah. the route that I went was blocked. Mm. So I did a U-turn, come back, and realised it was pointless, um, and handed the keys to another prisoner, and off he went. Well. You know? <laughs> so I know all the doors eventually were unlocked. You're not going anywhere, <clears throat> so this is... I mean, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um... During the negotiation, is there any discussion of charges for the riot? Not at that time, no. No. Um, well, how can you lay charges when the riot's just kicked off? Although, let's not distract away from the fact that, you know, behind closed door, they've already selected who's going to be charging who isn't. And the reason why I say that, because during the course of the first trial, the prosecution's opening speech was this, quote, anybody that stayed after the 1st of April deliberately stayed to commit a righteous act and therefore he's guilty. And the defence barrister stood up and said, well, let's consider these facts he's just put, put his speech across. And she went, here's a particular photograph. She says, on that photograph, there's over 300 prisoners on the roof after the 1st of April. Yeah. But there's not one prisoner being charged here. She said, I put to you that these people in this dock now, right, these charges were already set from the onset. It kicks off the riot, mm. selecting. And he went, no, but of course it was. And did you have that in the back of your <clears> mind during this leadership role? I, I knew I was going to be um, persecuted. No, I, I, I'm not a kidder. I'm, yeah. re I'm a realist by nature. <clears throat> and I knew because of my situation as a life sentence prisoner, already been involved in numerous conflicts with the prison system. You know, I knew I was in the limelight for the heavy sentence. You know, make no bones about it. And the reason why I say that, because as, you, as you're as perfectly aware by reading the book, I attended two trials. And on the first trial, I was acquitted of everything. And as a result of that, they come back and made further charges. Now, I firmly believe that if I would have been acquitted on the se the second trial, they would have come back with further charges for another trial. They were coming back for you, wasn't me. they? Yeah. Well, you got a Which big heart, wrong. man, sacrificing. You got 10 years for it and um, sacrificing that for the good of all the other prisoners and getting the conditions. Yes. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I don't put myself on a, a pedal stool, yeah. pats on the back or whatever. You know, uh, I, I don't praise myself. I don't want praises from people, even though I understand where they come in, you know, because as far as I'm concerned, I'm quite humble by nature. Um, and I just did what any normal, rational, conscious person would have done. I'm not standing for this. If the time come <clears> up again, <throat> would you have done it exactly the way you did Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. I make no bones so about it. you got no regrets? No, no, I'm not going to cry wolf. Yeah. No <laughs> chance. As far as I'm concerned, the prison, the prison system, you know, it was inevitable it was going to happen. Yeah. Because newspaper cuttings I recovered from the governor's office went back to the 60s and 70s about the discontent, about the mistreatment of prisoners and the conditions in prison. And that something has to change. And it was inevitable when it was going to be in the 60s, 70s, 80s, whatever, that it was going to come. It just so happened to come in the 90s. Yeah. So the fault doesn't lay with the prisoners. It lays with the prison systems for being arrogant. And the guards too, the way <laughs> they was. Because of the, that, 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 I'd say that, that, that documentary were, I mean, literally from... From the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, they're all like from the war, like ex army and yes. stuff, you know what I mean? So they're military and yes. they're like very strict, very. And prison's not military. No. It doesn't mix. No. You know what I mean? I mean, don't get me wrong, I understand that you have to have norms in society. Yeah, yeah. I think we all appreciate that. Um, well, it's good to have that, isn't it? It's, it's good, good to have to norms. Have, yeah. It's good to have some form of discipline to a degree. Yeah. But not to the extreme. It's when you take it to the extreme, it becomes personal. 
for instance, when I was a, a young lad, when I first went in prison, it was matches against the wall and um, fold all your clothing and your blankets into a square like military. And I went, piss off, I'm not doing that. Uh. But you'd have to do that. What, give, what given right do you, do you have to say I have to do that? And what rule does it say I have to do that? I'm not doing that. And I wouldn't do it. That's because of our military background, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. Dave made that rule. It was not in the rule book. Of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, so when you have people who have been in the military, and don't get me wrong, I respect them. You know, mm -hmm. they've been through the, the walls themselves. You know, it's just unfortunate that they come in this prison system. And most probably some do come in with the good intention of being an individual. But it's very easy to be caught up in that... Um, Group mentality syndrome. Well, a lot of them are nutters themselves, like ex Falklands and stuff like that. I mean, they're sort of prosthetic stress and all yes. that. Yes. They've gone through all that themselves, you know what I mean? Mm. And they shouldn't really be the prison guards, I don't think, personally. Not in that respect, no. no. Because, like you say, they, they suffer PSTD and all that, then it only takes a, a slight whatever to set you off. And you know, certain guys, you know that he's just a nutter in. You know, it's yes. just like you know what I mean. Yeah, I won't. I won't necessarily say a nutter because how do you, how do you differentiate somebody okay, who's, not a nutter, who's a nutter and who isn't? Yeah. It's hard to establish that. Yeah. Not a nutter, you know? but he's... I mean, they could have said that about me, and which they have said about me. They said the Lord's a psychopath, social path. You know, he's unstable, yeah. unpredictable. You know, well, how do you know that? Because of my behaviour. Yeah. But but the reason why I'm behaving like that is because you're treating me like this. So that shows me that I'm none of that. I've got a conscience, you know, and that equally applies to to warders in the system. You know, maybe they've been through traumatic times, maybe they're trying the best, but and I'll give you that example. There was one warder that gave evidence <clears throat> and he got a hard time by his own colleagues. And the reason why he got a hard time, because he's seen another prisoner being beaten up in the block and they stamped on him that hard, they left the imprints on his body. And he intervened and went, no, nah, enough's enough. You don't do that. And because he'd done that, his actions were, how can I put, cavalier. He went, oh, no, sorry. You're not one of us. And he got terrorised and his family got terrorised. And eventually he, 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 he suffered depression and all that and anxiety. So they shunned him. <clears throat> yes. No, the, the um, how can I put it? Yeah, they shunned him. Yeah, said to Yeah, they shunned him. You know on, I mean? day, on day three, were you satisfied with the negotiation at that point? Well, that I wasn't happened? satisfied, yeah. but something had to transpire there. Yeah. You know, negotiations had to take place whether you like it or not. Some had to get going, didn't it? You know, somebody had to go in, whether it was me or what, whoever. Somebody had to go in, but you didn't, didn't want anybody going in. Yeah. You know, don't want somebody going in and say, right, I want, I want um, three pizzas and a cup of tea, by the way. <laughs> and a helicopter. Gonna look, they're going <laughs> to look at you and think, you what? Yeah. You want them? And this is all going on. So it had to be people that went in who were mindsets. Yeah. Um, and from that point on, I did seven seven times and negotiated. Um, and on each occasion, they used to ask me, and people are aware of this, aware of it in the book, are aware of this, if you don't read the book, that they used to say to me, when are you coming out? And I used to say to them, I'm not coming out. You're going to have to come in and get me, but I'm not coming out. And every single occasion, they used to let me go back in. Come on. <laughs> you still got another six men there. And here's one man saying he's not coming out. What are you like? I'm not coming out. You're going to have to come in and get me. Wow. She's throwing the gauntlet down and they're still letting you in. So that alone, that alone tells me that they respected me to a degree because I had the tenacity to come down, negotiate, put my position on the table yeah. and go back in. Whereas if I would have been talking nonsensical, most probably went, well, you're not going back up then. And there's a big difference here. So after that first negotiation, what was going through your mind? Um, I didn't entirely, don't get me wrong, even though negotiations are taking place, we all know it's based on falseness. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't ba take everything bar literally. Bargaining. Yeah, it's not all literal like uh, we're all pally pallies. Nothing yeah. like that. Because I know at the end of the day, there's still an incident here. You're on that side of the fence. I'm on this side of the fence. But we've got to have a happy medium. We've got to be a margin. But how can you assure they'll keep the word? 
You can never get that assurance here. No. Never. And eventually, they didn't keep that assurance because, hence, on the last occasion I went to negotiate, it was skull dug in and then they got me. All right, before we get to that then, what other notable things are happening over the days of the riot? Oh, everything. I mean, don't get me wrong, prisoners were going out as the days went on. On the first day, over a thousand prisoners exited the building. Okay. You know? Well, um, they, they didn't get brutalised. <clears throat> no, because uh, we laid down the foundation. Yeah, and they didn't get about, the about time, assurances that nothing will happen. We want independent people there, etc. So that was that was abided and respected, you know. And I suppose to a degree, it had to be followed through because the minute you start bouncing all over these prisoners, the first lot that come out, no one else is coming it, out. Are they? It, 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 well, not people will come out. Yeah. And what it shows to the people beyond the wall now. Well, they'll be writing what they're saying up there, aren't they? Yeah, they're not keeping the words. Because yeah. if you're prepared to do that, that, then what are you doing behind there? Yeah, yeah. But as the days went on, you know, more and more dwindled off. But, and don't get me wrong, that's when you got a form of community going. The less numbers, the more you can operate, the more you can have a bit more sensibility about the whole situation. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong, we're all individual by nature, but we've all got to operate together. We've got to work together here. And um, eventually, within by the end of the week, it dwindled down to somewhat like 10, 15 people. You know? Um, and by that time, the place looked like a bomber gone off in it. There <laughs> yeah, was I nothing. There was, there was nothing like... Like it should be the, the prison. It was like... Like a bomb had gone off in it. What's morale like by that time is sleep deprivation <clears throat> taking over and um, people falling out. You're gonna get you're gonna get you're gonna get arguments, you know. Some people, you know, if I said to you, can can you just go over there and get that? Well why why the fuck should I? Well I'm not telling you, I'm asking you, can you just do it? Because I've yeah. got to go over there and sort that out over there. You know? So it's like anything else, you know, like some people are good at taking you know, like um, criticism. Some people are good at taking orders, but some people aren't. Yeah. You know, but eventually common sense wakes up. Well, you, you're right. What's it about? Why, what are we arguing over there? Well, nothing in reality. Just do it and problem out the window. You know, so yeah, you, you, you had these things happening. You had the emotions and your emotions going on still. You had people that, you know, like, most probably, you have people right near the end that didn't want to stay, but they stayed out of loyalty. Yeah. But they most probably thought, I've had enough of this. I don't want to get it down now. But it's gone so far. So many days. But it's gone so far where they're thinking, hmm, I better just stay out of loyalty, but yeah. I'm pissed off with it now. I want a proper shower. I want some proper food. Because <laughs> as time went on, you know, got to remember that the provisions we had got less and less. The food in the kitchen wasn't going to last forever because... <clears throat> All the electric was off. So you can't go down there and get a chicken out. No. Look green and mouldy. So what are you living off by the end of it? By the end, the provisions were very, very sparse, you know, like um, more or less tin stuff. Mm. Tins of corned beef. Plenty of corned beef, by the way, you present. I like corned beef. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a bit of bully beef. Um, <clears throat> mainly tin stuff, dry stuff, dry food, etc. Um, but even that becomes monotonous. Yeah, you can only eat so so many tins of corned beef. So many, we have lots of packets of complan. You know, yeah. drink so much of that. Um, so it was it was at that stage where it was coming to end, but it wasn't. But realization and pride gets the better of you thinking. Well, I don't want to give up yet. Imagine I didn't want to give up. I would have still sat there with a packet of crisps. Yeah. Wouldn't have bothered me. Imagine there'd been a lot of like some oatmeal, <coughs> stuff like that, because you get a lot of oatmeal. You had a lot of oatmeal, it? but no milk. It's not the same with water. <laughs> God, don't like it. <laughs> horrible, I'm isn't saying it? that, because he turned off all the electrical appliances, he turned off all the water pipes, the main water pipes. So you struggled there, and the excess water that we was available was coming from the reserve tank. God, that you know, sound... so that was that wasn't entirely clever. No, and I still had a shower every day. Yeah, 
you know, even though under the circumstance, under the circumstances, I used to strip off, turn it on, get under, it, and I'm, and it was freezing. You know, so I still, I still had that, that disciplinary factor of keeping my hygiene there, regardless. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, the flushing system didn't work, so people were shitting wherever they're shitting in buckets, whatever they had to do. So it's electrics off, no TVs. How are you aware that the world media is reporting all this stuff and what they're saying about you? Outside world, you know, um, outside world, the crowds were in vast numbers, <clears throat> you know, so information was being um, conveyed backwards and forwards. Forward. You know, they can't stop sh people shouting up. No. Regardless. Um, people can't pass things to you, like newspapers. Oh, no. Or... Although, although, admittedly, couple of times the Sun newspaper was passed up on the line. Oh, was it? On the screws, yeah. Was it? Yes. And we did have a field phone put in. He said, well, I want to put a field phone in. And I actually got on the field phone one day. It was just after the third. And I spoke to somebody from whatever department, quite quite articulate, quite posh. Um, but he's he, but he's but he's 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 exposure about the Mr. Lord is um um a reconnaissance helicopter above it's got a um a surveilling to do with the building and the building looks unstable we need you all to get out and more or less i said to him you you having a fucking laugh here or what yeah you think i'm falling for that <laughs> and then his next one of his next questions do you have any cheese there and i said yeah we've got loads of it. he said oh i could do with that so about with me um caviar so i started laughing and i put it down <laughs> <laughs> Why would the guards let you get newspapers? Doesn't that give you more bargaining power if you know what the world media are reporting? It does, but it doesn't. Because I think we already have an inkling what 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 you what know what's saying. Yeah, yeah. Really, don't you? You know, I think that I think their pa, pa, I think their decision to pass the paper was based on the criticism of the other fella Taylor. Yeah, because it was exposed then. So I think they wanted dissidents within the camp, so all that comes into play. Ah, oh, trying to break you guys up. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, but don't fall for them, them old tricks. How come we didn't camp. get slung off the roof then? Taylor? Yeah. Um, well, you're on charges and that, yeah. Yeah, true, true. You got right, right yeah, you're on cameras charges. On you as well. That's why I didn't yeah, throw one stone. Yeah, yeah. That's what I told them in the interview. I said to them, you've got nothing on me other than doing political messages. I said, you show me one coverage when I'm throwing a stone. So this this, this final none, is there? this final negotiation then, what did they tell you? Is it just the same right, thing? Right, what? the final negotiation, right, is, and I take responsibility and blame because I became complacent on that day. And the reason why that was because the sun come out. And from that day, uh, day on, it came out. <clears throat> and I was there on the roof, laid back, enjoying the rays, in my own little world, you're um, holiday, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And John 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 who materialised, he said, Alan, um, do you want to talk to you downstairs, negotiators? I said, right, I'll be down in a minute, mate. And I've got a minute to get out as I'm making my way, my way down. He shouts down, just be careful, lad. I don't fucking trust him. Mm. So um I made my way down, and you got to understand, right, that everything's been smashed, so you have to climb down. Yeah. All the spiral staircases are gone, it was all old Victorian cast iron. So I've gone down, made my way down to the front gate, E-Wing, the hospital complex. And who was stood there was a screw called Tate, who was from Hull that time, and a screw called Jones, who used to work in Strange Ways, female yeah. officer. And um, I went to the gate, and an exchange had taken place. And then suddenly he did something with his body, which I'd which I, which I seen. And, and my instinct told me, Something's not right here. It's like he's just conveyed a message, some yeah. type of Morse code, but body language. And I was right, because no sooner as I backed away from the gate and I turned round, all the doors, the full length of the landing, even the ones just past me, opened, and all the right squads come out. So you gave sort of signal, didn't you? Yes. Um, like I said, I became complacent, because when I dropped down onto that landing, I should have observed it, and I would have realised there was no debris on the landing. Mm. They cleaned it all up, moved it away, brushed it to the side. Mm. If I would have seen that, I would have known straight. I would have went, mm, why has all that been moved? And I you knew. You can't think of everything, though, can you? I mean, no. You're enjoying your sun. You're like, you know, no. you're having a bit of. Chill well, I was enjoying side. the sun. You know, I'm having a, I'm having, I'm having a, 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 a respite from, you know, the, yeah. high, 
the mental and, and, and physical conflict, so to speak. And okay, negotiations negotiations have to take place, but I became complacent on that day. I kept myself for it to a degree um, because I wanted to come out on that day. I would have still been up on the 25th day. I would have been up longer. I wouldn't have cared. I would have sat there like a gargoyle. Well, <laughs> that would have been the situation. Um, and I knew my exit was blocked. So my mindset was like, well, fuck it, let's go for it. And I ran at him. You know, obviously outnumbered, you know, got stuck in, got wrapped up, got a few digs and all that and dragged through the um, old hospital complex to the um, strip cell. You know, um, eventually they, they ripped all my clothes off me. How many was doing it, I don't know. And then forced a white suit on me. Um, I was trying to, you know, fight against that. Yeah. Um, as a result of that, they yanked me air back and tried to stand me up straight. They had hold of me like, like <clears throat> hunters that had caught its prey. Oh, wow. All smiling. Just to say yes. Yeah. <laughs> How many of them was the like? You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Not one could do it. No, no, no. They always come in numbers. Yeah. So that reduced the morale of the people on the roof then, and did it not last long after that? Day after, day after that, they come down. Day after that. Yeah. So what think. was the total days they were up? Twenty-five days in total. Twenty-five it lasted days. The right. It was the longest prison riot in 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 history in Europe. So they're gonna get you off to like some supermax facility now or something. Well, what happened from that point on, they actually sent me, transferred me. I didn't know where we were going at that time, but they transferred me within, let's say, the hour from there to um, Ashley Bridge Police Station in Bolton. Now, this was a new police um, complex. Um, high security, you know, skate proof, etc. cetera. Um, so it was, like, it was like the pride and joy, the, the Bastillion. Nobody's getting in this fortress. Nobody's getting out of this fortress. So it's like a police station. So, it's, so it's, are you getting like microwave meals and stuff? Yeah, they were giving me microwave meals, yeah. which were terrible food, by the way. <laughs> you know, I don't recommend it to anybody. You know, I've seen a program a couple of years ago based upon that since it's been out, and that the radiation still lingers when you're eating it. God. So it's out the question. I used to like the all day breakfast though. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I'd get in a fight on a Friday night, wake up in the yeah. cells and just give me an all day breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I was getting microwave food and all that, but it was a new police complex. They, they confined me on my own, round the, round the women's side of the cells, moved yeah. them all out, so I couldn't be with the rest of the detainees. But every morning, from that point on, they used to take me from my cell through two gates, all the way past the sergeant's desk, through to another two gates to get a shower. Whilst I'm doing that, the are searching my cell. Yeah, of course. I knew yeah. that because you set little things down. Save a very mood. Um, come back, let me in. <clears throat> and then on this particular day, I'm bearing in mind there's only two sets of con two, two sets of tea, um, keys in the container. So you used to work down below for the prisoners. Mm -hmm. You sign on duty, you got a keys each. You sign off duty, you got to sign off them keys when you're going off. And this particular day, they took me for my shower, same routine. When I've come back, <clears throat> he's unlocked the door. As I walked in, I seen a bunch of keys on the windowsill. Now I stood there and he goes, um, is that everything, everything done, Mr. Law? And I said, yeah, fine, thank you very much. He shut the door. Now, when I first went to the police station, they used to check me every 15 minutes. Yeah. My hatch was always down. Then it went 20, 30, 45, 50, 60 minutes. And just, just, by, just by coincidence, the World Cup was starting. So I think they were more interested. Let's get back to them office and yeah. watch the World Cup. The World Cup. Yeah. And um, once he shut the door, I grabbed the keys. Instinctively, I thought, this is a setup. You would think that, wouldn't you? Well, I did think it. Yeah. I did think it. Because I, I instinctively thought, I thought, how did they shut all these gates here? And this cell door? Yeah. If they'd been in searching the door? Yeah, yeah. The cell. So I've got the keys and under the toilet, put my hand in and hid them. And I was expecting, that evening, at four o'clock, the shift, the changeover, the biggest commotion in the world. I thought Keystone cops were coming through that door. Nothing. It was all definitely quiet. And even as the evening drawn in, I thought, it's still going to happen. Nothing. Well, what's happened? Is he, he's done it by mistake then, hasn't he? And then... Right, well, if he's done it by mistake, right, you two got a set of keys. Yeah. You took me from a shower. 
you still got the other prisoners to deal with on that land on that on that on that on that ground floor. You can't go above, you're on the ground floor. So you've got to go up in cells, go through gates. You come to search my cell and all that. I right? need, I need so the keys out, to go, go open the other cells. I'm talking about the full bunch of keys, yeah. not one key, the full bunch on the on the, my window cell. Right? So how did you you can shut my cell door, yeah, easy. But how did you lock the gate and the gate? So when you go off duty, the first thing you have to hand over when you're signing off... Is your keys, yeah. Keys? You're going to say, where's your keys? So they're waiting for you to make your move. Thank you very much. It was a setup. I firmly believe that. It was a setup. But, um, but, 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 but their expectations and my expectations are completely different. Because nothing transpired for the first fortnight. I sat on them. They might want to watch you to... to... Actually, act upon it. It's just well, the I, keys firm, I firmly believe that it was a setup, and they was hoping that I'd be rushing into it that evening, and they was they were sat off waiting. Yeah. So when I exit wherever, they're gonna go bump. There you go. You try to skate. He was armed up by the way. Covered everywhere anyway, so they're gonna see everything, aren't they? Yes and no. Yes yeah. and no. And the reason why I come to that bit, you'd be surprised. Um. And he had the keys for five weeks. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> five weeks. Now, after the second week... This is second prison. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had the run of the mill. <laughs> 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 uh, after the second week, I went, right, OK, fair enough. They're too busy watching the football. <laughs> While they're watching the football, as the evening draws on, I went, right, let's go for the run. Let's go for the walk. So I bump, unlocked my cell door for the hatch. Right, unlock the gate, unlock the gate. And I was in the main foyer where the, where the sergeant's desk is. Where the visit is coming through the side door on my left, into the, into the left door adjacent to the side door. And I go on to the right hand side for my visit behind closed glass. Yeah. I went in that room and I can see the length of that corridor and just behind the sergeant's desk, the room. And I used to see them watching the telly. Unfortunately, None of the keys fitted that door there. So I was panicking a bit. I thought, well, it's not a fit. I'm going to get out. I, I thought, I can go through the ceiling. It's going to make a noise. Yeah. Or kick the door. It's going to make a noise. And let's say on, the, on that week, the fifth week, it was on a Sunday, by the way. I've come out, boom, boom, boom. I'm at the door and thinking, what can I do? What? And I heard the buzzer from the back door where they're bringing the new detainees. So I've got in the my visiting area behind the door. Hid. And um, next minute, a WPC's walked right past the sergeant. She said, can you buzz me through? Right, so he buzzes her through. And just as she's gone past me and, and she's opened the door, and it's just as it's about to close, I've come out on my tiptoes, but fast, <laughs> and stopped it shut in the door. <laughs> yeah. But I wasn't sure what was beyond that door. Yeah. So what I've done, once I've gone through... I was like in 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 an area that was confined. I had a door behind me, a door to my left, a door to my right, and a door in front. You got some balls, oh, you know. Yeah, I thought the, ra the roof story was <laughs> yeah, something. No, yeah. just... <laughs> so what's happened? I've gone to the door in front, which had a glass in it. I looked through, and it was their canteen area. So I thought, and I could see through the windows to the outside world, the back of the police station. But I'm still confined here. Yeah. So the door on me right had a plate. So I'm putting my hand on it. See if we get buzzed through, but nothing now. And next minute, as I look through the door again with the glass, I see that WPC coming. So the door on the left had gone in the room, stood behind the door, and there was all PowerPoints. And she's coming back through to the police station, the main desk. As she's opened the door, I've come from behind my door and put my hands in and stopped it locked. And I'm, like, I'm, I'm literally like that. And I'm looking, she just stood there, but she hasn't turned around. I thought she turns around, she's going to shout, he's here, or are you? <laughs> she didn't do that. She's got sent. <clears throat> she's gone through, she's gone through, also systematically, I've gone through there, door shut, I'm in their area. I went, right, went straight over to their fridge and drank the milk. <laughs> right, because I thought, I need some milk. So I drank their milk. It's like a movie, this, isn't it? <laughs> it should be a movie. <laughs> I drank their milk, and then... I realised that the exit to the outside wheel's just massive feet away. Yeah. As I'm going there, there's a room on me right. Now it's their logbook signing in and out. 
I was tempted to sign Shout out, out. <laughs> saying, Lord, signing off. <laughs> you know, I was tempted to do it, but I thought, no, leave it. Taking the piss. Because what I did with my cell, I was getting visits. Yeah. And a friend who was visiting, we brought me up um, a sleeping bag. So I fluffed it up like I was asleep in it and left me book there at the side. Ah, right. I left everything in the cell. So they looked through, they think, oh, he's asleep. Yeah. Wouldn't be known that, there's nothing under that, so he's he's collapsing. Did you get that from, was it Escape from Alcatraz, was it? That That was a good film, that. Yeah. And um, eventually I went out the exit of the rear, down the driveway, crossed over the road, went into a field, Three quarters away into a few. I had the keys and I, I looked at the keys. I threw me there. I went, freedom. <laughs> Hence, I was on my way. Wow. What did that feel like? Felt great. Felt great. Felt like a, felt like a burden had been lifted off me. A weight had been lifted off my shoulder. You know, it felt like, like, even though, even though I was free, I knew that I couldn't be careless. Yeah. Because it was about making contingency plans to, keep away from there and not get captured. And plus your face has been known because it's off through all the papers. <laughs> face, let me tell you something. <laughs> I was out of Fortnite on this one. Yeah. I escaped twice, as you know. And um, I was in the safe house. And I thought, yeah, give me a day or two. I'm going to be on the front news. And I was. I thought, great. I thought, it'll die off, no problem. <clears throat> First week, full week, on the newspaper front page. I thought, that's it, weekend, they're going to forget go. about me. Following week, I'm in the newspaper again. <sighs> Next minute, they're throwing rewards up. And I thought, they're desperate for me. <laughs> desperate. And they were. Let's go back. You've just got out, thrown the keys. What's your strategy now? At that moment, my strategy was to keep going forward. You know? Um, and stay out. Stay out, that was the main thing. Yeah. Cloak and dagger stuff now comes into play. Um, given the fact that, you know, I've, I've not been round town, Bolton Town Centre before in my life. So it was, which direction do I go? Where do I go? And it's just by coincidence, I went across this field, climbed a big brick wall, went through a graveyard, climbed another brick wall, went down an embankment, there was a stream, you know, tried to make it go, fell in the stream, just laughed it off, got up. And when I got to the top of the embankment, there was um, a railway track. And I thought, which way do I go? Left or right? And he said, no, go, go left. And I ran all the way from Bolton all the way to Southport. Wow. On the track. Yeah. What are you wearing? Is it prison stuff? Or... No, my own stuff. Oh, your my own, own clothing, stuff. yeah. So you don't look like you're on the road? No, no. But luckily, the further I got out, the more rural it became. Which and is so better got for to you. Southport, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And eventually, I ended up in the central town of Southport, you know, the, the, the pier way, that way. How I many went, hours have you been on the run now? By the time, by the time I got there, it was touching between four and five okay. in the evening. You know, I escaped two early hours in the morning. So you know they're coming at this point? They're, they're on to you? No, not at that moment. Okay. They didn't even know I'd gone yet. Okay. That was the, that was the, that was the laughable thing about it. They thought I was still in bed asleep. Yeah. Um, the only she, reason why... She got a good to, distance then? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the only the only reason why it came on top eventually because they come in to feed me because I didn't wake up from my breakfast mm. and all that. They thought, oh, let him sleep. He's not bothering. And eventually when they're coming to, apparently he touched the sleeping bag and his hand went right down to the bottom of the bed. <laughs> so I will imagine he startled the expression and say, hold on, where's Udini gone here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how many hours exactly did you reckon before they noticed that? Um, they noticed that, right, from, from my understanding, you're talking, I must have went round about, if I had to calculate it, between 11 and 12 at night, I reckon I went. Okay, so you've got yeah. a good nine, ten hours on them then. Yeah. Are you still in Southport then at this point? Well, I got to Southport. Yeah. Went to the, the main recess toilet area, yeah. had a drink of water, and then I come out, and I thought... I need to get to Liverpool now. Were you hungry or just adrenaline? I ate a cabbage going? on the way from the farmer's fields. Did you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, resourceful too, eh? Yeah, it was awesome, but hey, it's not like eating, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and our Bugs Bunny feels believe yeah. me. 
Do you remember when Rambo escaped from the police station? He's yeah. Like on raw plants and animals. <laughs> and <stuff. laughs> so um, what you call it, um, I came out and I went over to the parking attendant. I said, excuse me, man, I'm a bit lost here. Where's the um, train station for Liverpool? He gave me the direction, so I walked there. And I got there and I see him and I thought, what do I do here? I can't just get on the train because we're dealing with built um, train station here. Yeah. And the last thing I want is get off. I the the ticket have... and they go, where's your ticket? You know? Yeah. I need to avoid any type of curiosity. Confrontation. And um, I got there and I looked at him. I said, I said, I need a favour here, mate. He said, what's that? I said, I come down in my car. Somebody's robbed me, me, me car and took me wallet. I've got no. He said, it's on me, mate. Don't worry about it. I said, oh, nice one, lad. Sweet. Fair enough, isn't it? Yeah. So when I got to Liverpool, I had to deal with the taxi service now. Because a friend of mine, God bless him, he passed away. Um, Vince um, was in jail with him. Yeah. <clears throat> and he was from Lagos. He was over here for drug smuggling. So I knew his address, his family's address. Ah. And um, I thought, I need to get to there. And... Um, but I had to deal with the taxi. So I went to the black cab and I said, um, can you take me to this address, please? I didn't have a clue when anybody was in or what. I was just taking no a chance. I had visions of like, open the door and run. <laughs> so I'm zooming you around socks this way. Um, more or less, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and um, what's happened, he pulled up. And just as he pulled up, somebody came out the front door walking down, some young lad. And I've got out and I said, pay the taxi and carried on. <laughs> <laughs> and within seconds his wife come she knew about me she knew off me and all that she said right blah and I made her contact another number and within three quarters of an hour they come round got me and took me to the safe house nice it's very oh. nice and I was in the bath when they come by the way having a bath and when they come I just got the towel on me and ran down the stairs <laughs> so you go to the safe house and they come to that safe house the cops Eventually, yes. Okay, eventually. So what happens in, in between that? Um, well, I'm, I'm in the safe house. Yeah. Um, and again, my... How can I put My cockiness to a degree. Yeah. Um, on the Monday, let's say about 12 o'clock, a couple of fellas that I knew come said, we can get you out of the country. Now I'm, I went, oh, leave it, leave it. Don't rush it. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, <clears throat> four days later... When we're ready to go, everything's ready now. Get me out of the country. Got the money, got new clothes, got the transport, know where we're going. Unfortunately, the person that was going to take me on their boat across to Southern Ireland was in contact with the police. Mm. It was a catch-22, though, either way. Yes, it was. Because you needed the money in that anyway, so yeah, you had to wait, yeah. didn't you? Yes. There's no point in going to scheme, was there? You know what I mean? Well, well, not, well, I can't get up and go without provisions. Yeah. It makes it even more mm. difficult. And, um, and if you go skid, you're having to rob and stuff and you're putting yourself on top all yes. the time. So, was, yeah. I mean, you had to wait to get your coin. Of course. Mm. And um, what's happened, um, this particular lady, she had a home boat, 40-foot cruiser. Mm. She's based in Manchester. So um, 18 fellas that I knew, gentlemen, went to pick her up. Before they brought her back, they staked it all out. You know, north, south, east and west, even up and down, make sure. Yeah. Brought her back, a few diversions, make sure there's no reconnaissance, watching, following. And um, <clears throat> everything seemed fine. Brought her in the house, sat there talking. My plan was to go out at 11 o'clock. Mm. And I'll never forget, I'm sat there. I'm 5 to 11, I heard the helicopter and I knew. I knew the speed, the lowness, I knew. And all soon it's above the house, boom, 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 I'm up. <clears throat> and I ran to the back of the kitchen. I didn't open the door. No. I just went diving through the glass and diving through the door. Landed on the landed on the pavement. But instinct told me straight away. Up, ran to the back wall, and I was up and over. But I didn't get over immediately <clears throat> because... The, the, the police have surrounded the house, 65, 64 coppers, armed police. Hell. So I jumped on, I went to jump over the right-hand side of the wall, one ran at it with a pickaxe handle, or whatever it was, jumped down, and there was a coal shed on the left-hand side and all. <clears throat> got on the wall and got on that, stood there. It was like um, a theatrical stage, because the helicopter's there with the floodlight on me. 
like all these coppers around the house. So I'm behind me on the glass looking through it at me like that. One got up there, plain clothes. Obviously, he had the revolver there, I could see it. <clears throat> and he went, Come on, Lord, he give yourself a and we went, Fuck off, you bunch of bastards. <laughs> and, I, and I ran across the top of the wall on the left hand side and jumped from that back garden wall <laughs> over the alley into the next <laughs> backyard. And I ended up doing that going through six houses. Wow. Diving through the windows. <laughs> diving through the windows, the old glass frame, the old lot. <clears throat> you actually that. What's your corridor? street. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, right? Surprise, surprise. When I got to that window ledge, the sill, I didn't realise how high they were. Oh, right, you know, right. There, I thought they were only down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I made that double ledge when I got there. I went, wow. <laughs> and I've done it. And as I've gone through the glass and all that, I've landed, I've hit some table, some bloke went like that in his chair, and the woman went, oh! But I didn't stop. I found the front door immediately, yeah. surprised. But rather than open it, boom, right through the old lot, the glass the lot. Did you like opening doors back then? No, no, no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and I went through um, six houses like that, bang, bang, one after the other. Didn't you like apologise to one of them in the book? Like you yes, jumped through I the did. window and you said yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, that was afterwards when I got apprehended. When okay. I, they, they transferred me to Wakefield. Um, it's only by chance that that they found me on that incident. They found me by a zip lighter rather than the torches. Oh wow! No. So 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 you're jumping through all these windows and they eventually how do they put you down then? Oh, capture me. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, on the last on the last house, I didn't hear the helicopter, so I knew. They are, they are coming through the houses like I am. No. Um, so I knew. But I also knew that I couldn't run the alleyways because they'd be blocking them off. So the, alleyway, so the helicopter was basically watching you where you're going. Everybody. Yeah, but he wasn't on the last house. Yeah, yeah. And I knew time was on beside them. So by that time, I've got kilos I'm cut. I jumped on the back of the bin over the wall onto the alleyway. A few feet spread me blood and backtracked on me blood and climbed back over. And I went into the gold shed and just pulled Debbie over me dead fast. No soon as I'd done that, they're coming through now. But but miraculously, and why they never got on it, they had to unlock the back gate. As soon as they unlocked the back gate, they let the dogs on. He said, he's got away, fucking find him. I'm laying there thinking, hmm. It's going on for whatever period. <clears throat> Couple come over, shine the torch and don't see me. Wow. I went, that was my reaction. I thought, wow. And um It'd be worse if you open the door, the Alsace you come in there. It's the worst of police dogs, is there? But but I think what happened there, because of the blood, because it's spread it just out the on side of the like wall. Gone they the got on it again and I, I took off. Yeah. And um it was only by chance. The helicopter went then. After certain minutes it went. I knew as soon as that went, I thought, they're going to call it off soon, the search. But stay where you are. Don't move. And it was only by chance, once come out, to light a cigarette, or cigarette, and um, the zip lighter, and he seen me. Oh. And before he even finished issuing the words, he's here, they were there, and he dragged me out. Oh. Ah. Dragged me out. Did he even get to have your fag, no? No. Bastards. Dragged me out. <laughs> You deserve to stick in after that, I'll tell you what. No. But after that, when I was in Wakefield, you know, um, a friend of mine who works for the Guardian, Eric Allison, um, he went round to them. You know, I was apologetic. I said, I give you compensation for the damage I've done. Yeah. It wasn't intentional. You know, it was adrenaline spur of the moment thing. And each one to You're not trying to house rob, are you? You're no, just to I'm just away. trying to escape. Yeah. Because feedback come from me, from somebody in Newcastle when they're raiding the houses up there. <clears throat> and he said, as soon as we get him, we're going to fucking waste him. So luckily for me, twice I've been apprehended, I've been apprehended in populated areas. Because I firmly believe he would have been secluded. It's a guy who feels the value, wouldn't he? He would have went waste him. And we just said he went for us with whatever. Yeah. Problem over then. When they captured you, couldn't they just take you somewhere and say you resisted and they killed kill you like that? No, because people out the windows looking. Okay. And the, and by that time they got me from the backyard to the front. The police fans were there. Yeah. Okay. So many witnesses. So they would have they would have had to they would have sort of like how do we justify yeah, this? Yeah. Because he even though we've got him, we restrained him. We've transferred him from that house to that vehicle there. So you. And no got... soon as I reached the police station, within let's say the hour. People are coming saying, you know, I'm a relative, where is it? 
Are you bleeding like crazy because of all the wind I, jumps? I, yeah, I got a few keloids on me. Yeah. You know, but I didn't even know what was cut, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Because there's adrenaline. Mm. So did they have to take you to get stitched up first? No, no, I didn't want nothing. I refused. Refused it? The doctor come yeah. along, I said, I don't want nothing off you. Yeah. You know, just let them heal the way they are. Just let them heal. Yeah. Scar's a scar, isn't it? <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> so what police station are you at next? Um, they took me to, that police station, they took me to, I think it was... Was it so, not Salford Crescent? That was the second escape. Some police station, a new police station in Liverpool. Um, which one I don't know. I know the second time it was Salford Crescent when they took me there. But I will. Uh, I might have been, might have been. But as a result of the escape, what they done, um, two of them sitting outside the cell door, but the actual ground keeping watch of me. Uh, right. Two have been transferred. The you know, and, they only, <clears throat> and they only stayed there throughout the course of the night. Yeah. Following day, they transferred me to Wakefield Segregation Unit. Um, so they watched you for the night. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are they not like beating you up or anything at this point? No. 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 Don't get me wrong. I mean, I would like them to do that because it would have given me grounds to say, this is typical and this is what they do. Yeah. yeah. No. But I think it was like hands off approach. Don't do anything. I don't think they had the balls to go no. out with anyway. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think the ward is. Like, would like to have done that the strange ways yeah. when they apprehended me. But again, hands off approach, nothing we can do here. So, what was the setup in Wakefield and what was the opportunity to escape from there? Um, well, I didn't escape from Wakefield, I escaped from. Um, so the second one was. The second one from Manchester Crown Court. I'm sorry. Oh, Manchester Crown Court. Okay. Yes. Okay, let's, one, let's yeah. go through that. Yeah. Well, I, I had to attend a second trial. And the reason why I had to attend a second trial because I was acquitted of all charges of the first trial, I was acquitted of the murder. Because he died from natural causes of blood clot into his left knee. Yep. And I was acquitted of riot. And let me explain about riot. Nobody throughout history, even the man, has been charged with riot. Is it in to the riot? Is that the actual charge? That's what it is in America. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Well, over there, has to, you have to be charged collectively for riot. But you can't prove it. So nobody's ever been charged with riot. So what they done... Um. They put me on a on a further charges. Now cons you now conspire to commit riot, mm. and you now conspire to commit grievous bodily harm. Mm. But I've just got off with the right charge. Did that conspiracy <clears throat> somewhere else and tell you? It's nonsense. Thinking, isn't it? It's nonsense. I know. Yeah. It's, no. it's 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 the most adverse political nonsense that the criminal justice system can throw up. But it's the easiest one to get you on. We got done for conspiracy to lead a, a criminal syndicate, didn't we? Yeah, so anyone else's actions then are all part of the conspiracy. So everyone's crimes you're responsible for. And every so, so, so effectively, like joint enterprise. Yeah, yeah, our, yeah. Phone, like, our phones were tapped. So I, I phoned someone. They're all, also asked that co defendant. Yeah. They'll phone someone. They're all plastic to call defendant. Yeah. We had people in there. We didn't even know. Oh, we didn't no, even no, know. Hold yeah. on. Hold on. <laughs> I've just phoned such and such. Is he on it? Yeah. 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 Just went out like a spider's web, <laughs> didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> 156 call defendants we had. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you six of them not. I knew if you were in battle. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's nonsense, like I say, I mean, conspiracy charges were brought originally um, for the IRA. Yeah. But they've gone, well, we can use this. Well, they should only be able to use it, it politically, shouldn't they? Absolutely. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> Same um, as wiretaps. They shouldn't yes. be used for, like, for, for like, the bombers and people like that, not for the average cr no, crime. No, no. But it's easy to charge. You get your unknown. Yeah. Conspiracy. Because there's no charge really to lay. You conspired to commit grievous bodily harm, so your question's going to be... But who have I actually committed GBH against? Can you enlighten me? Can you bring the perpetrators here? I, I've not done anything to nobody, but... Show me the evidence that did... I'm thinking about it. Yeah, but until you do that act, yeah. why are you being charged? There's, exactly. no, there's no criminal offence taking place yet. It's a thought crime, isn't it? Of course. Yeah. So you're being done for thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, George Orwell, for that one. So what happened on the um, second escape, um, eventually... Um, I had to attend the second of trial, um, the conspiracy ones. And um, we had the run of the mill 
Manchester Crown Court, down below in the cells. Yeah. We wasn't confined to our cells in daily. You know, we could wander around, we can come up and down in to and fro the courts. <clears throat> um, and this went on for the full period. And um, on this particular day, I'm stood in the um, recess area with um, something like a, as a party and just talking, generalising on the whole situation. And um, he's picked up a br broom stick, so to speak, brush, and he's playing around and he's hit the ceiling. And he's sounding hollow. Yeah. I don't know, give us that ear. And I've hit it and it's gone in. Because it's only like plasterboard, plywood, well, plasterboard. And it's gone in. So I pushed it right up, like to the hilt of the brush, and I went, that's our way out. I know it. Now, when you stood in the recess, the open doorway, <clears throat> across the way, you'd crown court four. About, about four, four feet across to it, let's say. The steps leading up to it. Well, this went all the way across the ceiling. So you go, as you go up there, you're going through, yeah. So what happened, I said, that's our way. So he's climbed up between the partition walls and toilets, made a hole in it so not big enough for you can get in. I said, just go from that point to that point and make a little hole. He went across, made a little hole, looked through the glass and seen his finger. I went, yeah, that's our way out. Jeez. I said, that's our way out. <laughs> Come back. I said, right. I said, but everybody can't go here. It'd be too obvious. Yeah. You know, you have to have, you have to have like decoys. Um, got the lads in that were on trial. Said, look, this is a situation. We all can't go. I said, I said, at the end of the day, I know I'm going to get it every sentence. Blah, 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 blah. I said, you're just going to get light. Take it from me. And they did get light. <clears throat> and I said, but nobody's been forced to stay or go. You have to make that decision yourself. And the ones that said... You should be the first out of there, though. Um, well, I want it to be done equally yeah. rather than coercively. You know, yeah, but the rest of the lads looking at it from their point of view, they go, going, well, he's, you've got the most to do. You know? Absolutely. You should be out. That's what I'd yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. You know but I mean? does, that doesn't dismiss... To me, I like to treat everybody equal. You give them the choice. Regardless. To, yeah. You know, because they just have as much as right to me to go through that hole. Yeah. You know, but it worked out, it worked out sensibly, the arrangement where someone said, no, we'll stay. Um, <clears throat> and hence we all went through the hole. At four o'clock, then at four o'clock. The reason why I say four, because that's when the court case is finished. And those ones, those ones that stayed, they'll probably get a lighter sentence because they just they'll probably think, well, the guys were... Well, they only got, well, they all, well, they got the lightest sentence for what they were up for anyway. Yeah, yeah. Three, fours and fives. Oh, God. You know, they didn't get any extra because we've escaped. Yeah. The only thing that was laughable about it is that the last man being there, because we were lodging at um, Central Detention Centre in Manchester for a full week in the cells. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I must admit that the treatment during the course of that trial there was, was 10 times better than the prison system. Was it, yeah? Because we were open up there. Yeah. The food was good, you know, I must admit. And the first time they come in the morning with the breakfast was on a trolley, trolley tray from the cafeteria. So and they the piss in, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> and because I'm the first one up, yeah. going to be trained or showered, mm -hmm. it come through, I went, all right. I went, yeah, give us that here. And I, I went to the actress and went, what did the breakfast for? They couldn't, uh, and they're all asleep. Went, right, I'll have some of this. And then it was um, Nathan Gaynor woke up. He said, he said you bastard, it's breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> but um, we all went through. I went through, they all got bigger. I dropped down, they all got bigger. Went through the Crown Court. Um, Crown Court for it was. Went through the judge's chamber. Exited. Went a few passageways. And he was um, a gentleman in the suit. Ended up being a Crown Court judge. Oh, God. Um, and the question was put to him, um, excuse me, where's the exit workman? And he went, yeah, just go down there, there and there, you know. <laughs> and years ago, <laughs> no doubt he was having a few gins and tonics. Yeah, exactly. You know what done, yeah. Yeah. And um, what happened, years ago in Crown Square, he had the big brown doors. Okay, yeah, yeah. And that's the doors we come through wow. to our freedom. Did you actually open them? Open them, the two oh, of them. Yeah. Bolt, 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 and then just went, boom, the old lot. There's <laughs> no shoulder in them, though. No. no. <laughs> open them, went Broken down the shoulder steps. with their big doors, wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> so went down the steps, and um, it was me, Tony Bush, John John. We went our separate way. We yeah. went to the canal. And again, you don't really plan anything. It's on the spur of the moment. 
But but what you realise you have to get from the point, the point that can bring you know like people's you you to people's attention or curiosity yeah. or whatever. Um, well, with um, six of you, <clears throat> I mean, I presume he's all from the same area, or he's going different no, ways. all different areas, except for except for John John and Tony. They were from Liverpool. Now, is it easy <clears throat> to break up at that point and get everyone go separate ways or stay? Yeah, because as soon as the doors open, they all went boom. Uh, yeah, they were off. No one asked. Nobody wants to hang around. It's not like those like um, uh, singing dance in the centre. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> None of that. Yeah. We ain't got time for that. <laughs> is John John Billy Moore's mate. Um, I think yeah, big yeah. big big fella, John John Body. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've met yeah. him with Billy Moore. Yeah. yeah, he does a lot of uh, like mentoring in Liverpool, John. Yeah, John. yeah. Yes. Lo love to get if he watches this. Love to get him on. Yeah. Oh, he's a, he's a gentleman. Yeah. yeah. And um, quick, quick question though, before you go ahead, when you and your mate, the guy, I mean, put the stick up and you noticed it was hollow, how many fellas were in there that you then told about your escape plan, and were you so tight with those fellas that you realised that? None of them would drop a dime. Yeah, I trusted him, yes. Okay. Yeah, I trusted them implicitly. Yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah. Um, because while we were in the course of the trial, we were quite rebellious. Okay. We we're still throwing shit on screws and all that. Yeah. Giving them our time. And um, the first time that they brought us our meal, mm. this was the first trial. <clears throat> this is what you get a sandwich and a a, a, a cup of um soup. Yeah. So we're not having that. One, we don't want that and we don't know what you've done with it. And end up throwing it on it and we barricaded it up down there so we're not having it <laughs> and it was the judge that set the order said no these men get proper food wow yeah. you know because our point is why would we let screws make our food do what they do and give us our food we want food that's neutral I've seen what they do to nonsense <laughs> food yes. in the prison you know what I mean yeah. <laughs> the screws are doing to ours <laughs> <laughs> so so that was the situation. Um, Everyone was tight. Yes. Yeah. 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 I had no qualms with that, you know. Um, and surprisingly enough, when I spoke to one of them uh, many years down the line, Andrew Nelson, he's from Windsor Island, John. He was one of the last ones to be escorted from the cells to the detention centre above. And as he's cuffed and all that, more left, he said, there's only so many left. And he said, there's only me left. And they go, what do you mean? He said, there's only me here, yeah. And they thought he was taking the piss. They said, ah, shut up, you idiot, with no words. And eventually when he went down, they said, they're all gone. <laughs> <laughs> so you're right outside right now. Now what's your new strategy for this escape? Um, so we're outside and the first, the first instinct is get away. Get away from that area. So we, we were going to go straight to Liverpool, but... But the transport that's supposed to meet us there, mm -hmm. right? Even though it was on the spur, one of them had a, one of them, it wasn't there. So I got, I got a bit I said, we can't stand there. I'm going. I'm going. <clears throat> and we ended up on Manchester Canal. And we're going along. And the um there was two um fellas there. Obviously, we're just selling their gear and doing yeah. whatever. I said, excuse me, I, I'm gonna be a bit cheeky and you don't know me, but you will get to know me. Right, I said, um, we need a taxi, we need a taxi immediately. We need to get away. And while I'm saying that, and they're interviewing, no, John, Joe and Tony. Yeah. The helicopter's now above the Crown, the crown Court, bum, 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 it's there. That's how fast they got onto it. You've not got your lead time <clears throat> this time. No. And um, he said, right, so he went, cancelled everything, boom. He said to his mate, come get a taxi now. Taxi come, I said, I appreciate that, thank you very much. I said, my name's bum, blum, blum. And um, got in a taxi, it took us all the way to Liverpool. Wow. wow. Took us all the way to living. Guardian gone. Angel right yeah, there. Yeah. Well, so he was a godsend, but and I was out there just um just under twenty something days there. Yeah. And that was moving around safe houses, was it, and stuff? Um I was in I was in a couple of safe houses. Um but I kept going back to this particular one because I felt more safe there. Yeah. You know, and and don't get me wrong, it's about getting provisions this. You know, you need provisions. And eventually ended up moving from Liverpool to Manchester and then going to um, Ashton Underline. Ashton Underline wasn't too bad. So one of my it's very old quiet. mates from... Isn't it was it? quiet, but one of my old mates knew that I weight, liked me weightlifting. He said, I'll take you to the gym. I was quite the gym. I got there. No, looking at me while I'm pulling. He said, don't get carried away, for God's sake. <laughs> but he knows what I'm like. I'm pounding away and all like that. What's he doing? Bloody hell. Yeah. You know? And as I'm walking out, he was the... Um, 
the trainer, the, the boxing trainer, the old geezer, so to speak, a bloke, he went, much respect for where you trained there, fella. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but it was too much attention. Was it the first or second escape you was helped by the Noonan crime family? It was the, um, let me get that right for you, it was the... The second escape. And he's dead now, isn't he, that Noonan? Yeah, yeah. Wh which one was that? Um, that was um, Damien. And how come he was in a position to help you then? Did you already have uh, feelings with him from previous? Yeah, no, but I've known, certain people know like Damien and all that throughout, throughout the evening when we were kids. Yeah. You know, yeah. didn't hang about with him, just yeah. no often because we bumped into each yeah. other. Yeah. You know, so again, it's like anything else. Criminal fraternity, especially local, carry that affinity. Yeah. You know, and if they're in a position to help, they'll help because it's like, it's like, I won't say it's pride for them. That'd be the wrong word to use. It's like we're assisting somebody who we know on our side and fuck to them. Yeah. Sadly, that's old school. Though. The ones nowadays aren't like that. No, no. no. I mean, from my understanding now, themselves. my understanding now, there's too much like, they're just snitch together. They're snitch, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just correct, talk. and that's the there problem. There ain't no honour. No, no one amongst these this day and age, really, no. in that respect. No. <clears throat> so, yeah, he met me at um, the cinema showcase in Liverpool. You know, um, the smallest car I've ever seen in my life. A little turbo, whatever. So I've got to get in it. He's got his wife in it. He's got his kids in it. He's in it. Right, there's Tony and me, we're all like that. I said, you could have brought something a bit more bigger than this, mate. You know, but as soon as he got out of the car to meet me, he picked me up and swinging me around and said, put me down for God's sake. You are all big lads anyway. You probably make a limo, make a limo look as well. <laughs> um, and from that point, only took me to the safe house. You know, and I was happy, but it was about meeting other people that I knew prior to me imprisonments. Yeah. You know, do well for themselves in Manchester, even this day and age, to do well. And um, <clears throat> how can I put it? Eventually the provisions were put together, but I wasn't happy in the new safe house that I was in. I wanted to go back out in the countryside, rural. Stay out of the way. And it was arranged, believe it or not, in Salford, it was arranged. And um, I got in the car, and as we pulled out into a love lane, um, he didn't have a clue, this, this, this driver. Yeah. He's just been told, just take this bloke here. It doesn't know who you are. No, no. And um, going down the road, Matty has next minute, I see all these cars turning from the bottom, turning right onto the road. Unmarked, 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 unmarked. Un but I know, it was like a funeral parade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going too slow. And next minute, the marked ones were coming, the vans and the cars then. And I said to him, I said, there's a film, mate. Just pull over the phone box here, will you? So he pulls over. I actually pick up the phone in the phone box. And when it got a few yards from me, the first car, I threw it down and I was off. And I ran across the grass verge near the, um, the old masonettes, near the McDonald's that used to be there. And um, as I'm running across, he's, the, he's put his foot on the accelerator trying to block me off. But I beat him under the archway. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm gone. Boom, I'm gone. And um, I'm, I'm, I am a parallel thinker. I, I do think very fast. And I thought, right, I'm thinking of dog scent, scent. And I seen the opening to these masonettes on my left hand side. So what I've done, by right, you got the grass there, you got the pavement, you got the open. So I ran fast as I can, and then I, I, as I got near the edge, I, I, I dived through the air and hit the two doors and went in, landing at the bottom. So I've gone up the steps, bang, 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 and I, and I dropped down on the veranda. So yeah. no as soon as I've done that, because I've got a ledge, I've seen them all running now. They're running that way, thinking I've run that way. When I haven't, I've come this way. As far as the dog sniffing, they'll go up to the grass. Correct. And we won't know where else to go, will we? Correct, no. No. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> there's two doors, one on my left, one on my right. The one on the right was open. So I've, I've crawled over to it, gone and shut the door and went upstairs. And whenever that matter of minutes, a, 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 a lady come up. And she was all right, you know. Yeah. She said, who are you? I said, I said, I'm wanted by them. She said, all right. Chris Salford. I said, look. If you've got kids and all that, go for a walk. When you come back, I said, I won't be here. If anybody answers the door before you do that, don't answer it. If they say they got a search warrant, don't let them in. She said, right. 
So anyway, cut long story short, right? Sound like <laughs> it, it didn't really happen in Salford, though, really, don't it, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, what's happened? You're saying that in Cheshire or somewhere. <laughs> yeah, no chance. Key on the door. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> <laughs> on fire. Stay where you are. <laughs> on the phone. There's a stranger there. Hey, go. <laughs> Hold on. Somebody chasing me with an axe. Like, yeah. you're coming in. <laughs> <laughs> so to cut a long story short, um... I'm watching through the net curtain down below and the ones in the plain clothes trying to ming in, mingle with the crowd, but they're yeah. all stepping away. You to say, your business, we're not interested. Again, shed no skylight. I would have got on the roof. The helicopter went. So I thought, going to call it off soon. <clears throat> oh, son, I heard voices. In the house, manly voices. So I've gone, well, what's this now? So I've come out the bedroom, bam, bam, bam. I looked down and there's coppers in, 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 in the hallway now with the dogs. And it was one of the young kids opened the door. And when he opened the door, coppers turned around and said, them, have you got a dog in here? And then she's come out and said, what are you doing here? But the dog's on the scent now. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. He's on the scent. He's been so I, thought, I thought, well, I can't go through the window because they're all there. I can't go there because there's no skyline. Yeah. So I know it sounds comical, Something like Billy Smart Circus. I've tried to sit in between the, the bed and the wall. So I've squeezed down like that and trying to pull the bed much as they can against me. Um, <clears throat> Too big of a lad for that. Oh, it was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and then what's happened? They've come in. What the hump, bam. And seen me. One of them's ran. He's ran out the room dead fast. <laughs> and I jumped up and I went like that. I went, well, it's a fair cop then, isn't it? Yeah. Well, so they handcuffed me. As they're taking me down the stairs stairs to the front door she stood there with the kids and the person who's in charge of the the team in other words he, he had a suit on i said i'd just like to say now that this person here had no had no idea that i'd entered her house the door was open and i've just come in otherwise the charge you yeah, yeah 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 that or try and get her to make a statement against yeah. you saying that you yeah but that's why i said it out loud so she was on it yeah, yeah, yeah you know um and it was more feasible that and all. And that was the truth anyway. Well, I mean, it was the truth, but for you to get it out there like that, they can't, then they can't come out with that kidnapping no. bullshit. No, anything, she assisted I and mean? all this crap. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm lucky on both escapes, they never charged the people, the occupants of these houses anyway. They left them be. Um, and again, from there, they took me to um, Salford Crescent from that point. And then from there, I ended up going to um, Full Sutton Prison. How is this affecting your trial, all these escapes? Um, it, it, I was indifferent to it because it, it doesn't it doesn't distract from the fact that I'm, I'm a serving life sentence prisoner. Yeah. So regards of what you're going to impose on me as a judge, it doesn't alter the fact that I'm still serving life. Yeah. You know, you can give me what you want. And the reason why I say that, I got done for the um, assault of the copper in, during the course of the um, trial. <clears throat> and what had happened... He was only youngish, a bit ego, a bit in your face, want to try it on, prove something, because I'm wearing a uniform, I'm infallible. And um, he's putting the ankles on, but he's putting them on tight. Um, bit of a bully. But he was too small to bully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, well, he probably he got bullied to, in school. He was trying to ex exert so. his authority yeah. too much, but he was trying to show off with it. Yeah. <clears throat> and he went on for about two days, he put it on, and then he's pulling me forward, so I'm pulling him back. And if I go forward, he's pulling me back. And on this particular day, we were waiting to go back from the cells down below to the um, detention centre. And he's put it on. And my mind had always been set up. I thought, fuck him, he's got to get a good hiding now. That is it, I've had enough. Yeah. So he's put the coast on, tight. And as I walked from the cell, just to exit, go upstairs to the main, up to the lift, I stopped outside the office. And excuse me, Okay, you can come look at this. And I was sort of like level with the wall. Yeah. <clears throat> and I said, um, is my is my hand going blue? He went, yeah. Is he, I said, you consider that too tight? He went, yeah. He went, right, 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 right. Take that off there and loosen it. As soon as, and I pulled my hand that way. So he had to come that way. He's had level with the wall. <laughs> so as he's doing that, as soon as he took it off, I went in the back of his head. I mean, you little bastard. Have some of that. And he's had hit the wall, he's gone down, he's sort of stumbled backwards into his colleagues, his earpiece is down there, <laughs> right? I said, that's for being a twat, in other words, etc., yeah. etc. 
And um, I seen my gap. There's a little bit of gap. I didn't exactly, you know, like covering him. And he's like that. And he goes, in it, it. Ain't nobody gonna do nothing about it. He's just hit me, right? And he said, for cheeky, being a cheeky bastard, you can have it again. And I right, and I'm hitting him in the balls, <laughs> right? <laughs> How I've done it, I don't know. Got him in the balls, and he's gone down. He's gone ah ah ah, right? So then the and they, they come towards me. So I faced him. I said, I don't give a fuck about you lot. I said, yeah. I'm doing life. What are you gonna do? Let's go for it. So the, now the PO from. The prison's going mad. He's saying, back off, you lot, to the coppers. Back off, you lot. Leave her alone. Back off. He's more probably thinking, don't start with law, for God's sake. That's all we need down here. Um, so eventually, they've gone away, took me to his cell, come back, and the shitbag's now handcuffed me to a WPC. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> right, so I've gone, all right, fair enough. I've done what I've done anyway. Yeah. They took me to the lift. Do you know you're not going to do anything to a WPC? No. Exactly. You know took me mean? to the lift. Right, as I got in the lift, you could cut the atmosphere with a knife because the most probable thing he's going to go off in this lift, but he didn't. No, as soon as I got to the main detention center, the ones that were on the looking after us, then the coppers, I'll tell you now, they were all right with us then. Yeah, anything we wanted to do. As soon as I got out the lift, and I like, he said, he said, What's going on, Lordy? I said, That little bastard, he went right. In other words, we're going to have words with him, we don't want no trouble, <clears throat> and um, yeah. That was the situation on that. But another time, I've been escorted on a 6-2 committal for the Strange Ways incident. And then I've already been searched at like Wakefield. Yeah. And when I've gone to the sergeant's desk, he's gone, um, right, strip searching. I said, I don't think so. You're not strip searching me again. You've done it once. He said, oh, I've got one of them, have we? And I'm walking around. I stopped and I thought, ah, bollocks to it. I took an orange out of my pocket I stepped back like a like a, a, a baseball throw and I threw it at him right in the face. <laughs> so anyway, I've gone to the cell and all that. He said, you're being charged. I said, whatever. Dude, what are you going to do? Yeah. Went into the um, the court area. I've been charged with um, assault. I'm giving his body arm on the copper. And the copper's there. He's got a strained neck, a thick lip and all that. So eventually, he turns to him the magistrate. He said, you got anything saying you missed against certain circumstances? I said, that's what fact I have. I said, one, I want my orange bat, and two, he's been tangled, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they try and charge you with murder of a officer that was a canine officer? Or assault? That was years ago. Yeah, yes, yes. That was um, that was in um, Full Sutton, the riot. Yeah. Yeah, when I come in building Full Sutton riot, <clears throat> end up having a riot. Not it wasn't particularly about conditions, it was about locking us down on Sunday mornings. Yeah. You know, so they can go doing their training in the gym, which was bullshit. They all sit there reading the Sunday morning papers. And you're not getting so it the ended exercise where, out. Well, it ended up where we're not having it. We're not going to be locked down three, four hours Sunday morning. It's a weekend. It's bullshit, that isn't it? And um, ended up where we barricaded the landings. <clears throat> and um, it went on all day, in other words. The following morning, um, they come and said, look, we need negotiations. I didn't get involved in the negotiations. Yeah. Um, and then facing it, the, um, no, sorry, it wasn't for something, it was Franklin to correct myself. Um, and facing D-Wing then it was, was the complex for the um, Ashton Turf and all the fire engines was on there. Next minute they've gone. And the dog handlers were there, about half a dozen, maybe seven. <clears throat> and they're being a quite abusive to us. Yeah. Skitting us and all that. And I, I remember saying to him through the window, I said, I'm fucking coming for you. Not having it. And then um, what's happened? Went to this one of the cell doors and we took it off within seconds. But right, take the door off, put the table under the window cell, put the door on it, a ramp. And we hit that window around about half a dozen times and the old lot just went onto the floor. No sooner as it hit the floor, John Hughes was there with me. He jumped out and I followed him straight away. As he jumped out, I picked up a stick. And don't get me wrong, I like animals. Yeah. You know, I realised that animals are conditions. Um, I jumped out and as I went towards his dog handler, he's like that, get him, get him, get him, with the dog. And I'm trying to avoid it, but he's trying to set the dog and the dog's going... Rrr. 
and they ended up clonking the dog over the head with the stick. Well, you go to self defence, you know, but he's um, the shit out of the dog, yeah, yeah. Besides, because I, I, I went for him, not the dog, yeah, exactly. You know, the he's, dog he's wasn't saying, the one god with it, just the, god, yeah. the, the, the dog did cause the problem, no, no, no me. absolutely. And I knew the dog realised that moment when I clunked him on the head because he must have thought, this was in our training practice. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And at that point, the dog was trying to get away then. Yeah. But he's pulling it that way. He's pulling it that way. He said, go forward, get him. And I hit the dog again. And unfortunately, the, the dog passed away. I didn't know at that time he passed away because at that time I had another friend of mine, Owen Eppbone, who was involved in the Risley riots. And all the CNR team was coming round now. So John had got back in the window and I'm stood there with Owen and all that. And he's saying, you get in. I'm saying, no, you get in. I'll give you a leg up. No, you get in. And that time, they're getting near and nearer. It was like um, a locomotive coming. Boom, ah, boom, right. boom, boom. <laughs> in America, <laughs> the, the police, well, the dog handles, the dogs actually have their own badges. They, mm. have, they actually are the, the, well, well, the officers themselves. Yeah. Well, what happened, right? I mean, eventually, I was um, dispersed the whole prison, the segregation yeah. unit. And the following day, they took me to the adjudication and said they want to charge me with killing the pr prison officer. I said, I said, I don't think so. I said, you can bring in the RSPCA for cruelty to an animal, but you're not going to charge me under any circumstances for killing a prison officer. Right? Um, and the governor went, well, we have to call the witness. I said, well, what witness would that be? He said, oh, well, the dog handler says, I said, well, get him in. He was actually there. He come in, he's crying his eyes out and all that. But I didn't have no sympathy towards him. No, no, no. I had sympathy towards the dog. Yeah. You know. But <clears throat> he caused that. He caused that. I didn't yeah. cause it. No. You know, I know my, uh, his actions precipitated my actions. If you've got a stick, you ain't going to stand there and let an alley bite you, are you? You know no. what I mean? No. You've got you to yes. fight for yourself. Yes. Um, and eventually he dropped him. Didn't come back to me at all. Which was, which was good, really. Yeah. Because I know, I mean, you got to realise that because he, my profile, my status, that preceded me within the system, if they could have had the opportunity to throw the key away, they, they would have thrown off. the key away. Yeah. And that would have been the apple to cherry on the cake, wouldn't it? Really? Absolutely. Killing an you know, officer. That, 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 that would have been it. I yeah. would have dusted and bedded for the rest of my life. Yeah. You know, um, and this is why I'm glad that I'm self-educated. This is why I went into law to a degree. Mm -hmm. You know, so it give me that, give me that upper hand to argue my points, my technical points. You know, like this can't be the situation under A, B, C, D. You got a very high IQ. You can just tell by speaking to you, and you're obviously streetwise. And it's kind of, it's uncanny really because you get a lot of people who. Uh, very clever, but generally don't have no street smarts. No, you don't. You don't often get <clears throat> the person who has both. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That I mean, I, I mean, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. I mean, it took me a long time to actually realize my potential in respect to you know, like uh, attainment level. Yeah, you know, because up until that point, it was all about fisty cuffs. Yeah, you know, so to a degree, I was creating my own calamity, but giving them justification to knock me back all the time. Um, and sadistic justification by them. And it was one day when I realised, because I always frowned upon the fact that the pen is mightier than the sword. I didn't believe that, but n from that point on, I did. Yeah. Because leaps and bounds, it opened avenue, avenues for me that I never dreamed of. Um, and it put me on that equilibrium with them, sometimes above them. And because I was taking litigations against governors, screws, you know, because I was putting things pen to paper, request complaint forms, you know, couldn't twist it round on me. There it is in black and white for you now. Whereas if I did it verbally, you go away and write, write your report and say what you want. Yeah. So somebody reads, Lord was aggressive. Well, I explain aggressiveness to me. And I had that from a psychologist years ago. Produced a report. And my worst thing, I'm not, I'm not entirely happy with this, so I'll be bringing this to my solicitor's attention. His next report was, Lord was aggressive and he threatened me. So I said to him, in a request complaint to him, I said, can you like me to these threats? Did they offer dire consequences? Did they offer expletives? You know, did they gest gesticulate in a threatening manner? You know, didn't answer me back. Yeah. 
because he knew I was right. And to put a final point in it, I'd taken five psychologists from the prison system to the B British Psychology Society and won my case against the five of them. Wow. And one of them, one of them, um, and two of them were principal psychologists. And one of them got done for them professional misconduct against me. And another one left the job and left the country before she got to the board. How many years total did you end up serving? 32 in total. 32. 32. And I never, I never envisioned for one moment, and it wasn't my intention to serve 32 years. Yeah. It's just unfortunate. My circumstances, you know, they're, they're, they're within my hand to a degree, but they were out of my hand. Because unless you're there in the prison environments, which you know about anyway, yeah. you know, it's a case of do you put your head in the sand and think, okay, I'll just take it on the chin. To take it on the chin precipitates their behaviour further against you. And a psychologist said to me once, she says, why do you hate us all? I said, because you're all the same, whether you wear a uniform or you don't. I said, the mere fact you turn a blind eye to what's going on. And I said, and, 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 and I said... It's example, the fact they could take your freedom, isn't it? Well, well, the, well, it's not about... Yeah, they're taking your freedom. And I suppose the majority of prisons have no problem, no qualms about serving the sentence. It's how you're serving your sentence that counts. Well, the, how you're being treated. Actually being sent down is your punishment. If after that, it should be, you should be treated as a human. Absolutely, I agree. But your self-concepts are strict when you enter the prison system. And what I mean by that, they take your clothes off you and you give you your number and we call you by your last name if we want to call you by your last name. Yeah. That's, your, that's, that's them dehumanising you. But the mere fact you're not there for that to be dehumanised, you're there to be rehabilitated. And I use that term in a laughable way because if you look at the 1974 Rehabilitation Act, there's nothing in your favour upon release. It's all against you. Yeah, of course there's yeah. <laughs> you can't le make leaps and bounds with it, you know? Um, so you're stuck. So people watching this, we've done over two hours with Alan today, and that's just some of his riot stories. There's more. We've done his major escape stories. 30 plus years, he must have tons more stories. If you have enjoyed this today, please put a comment in the boxes below this video. If you've got a question for Alan, he'll be, he'll be checking these out, put them in the description because me and Wildman have just been sat here, our minds have just been absolutely blown. Just like I said with his book, you know. Love to have you back, by the way. That's oh, what I'm about to say back, next, yeah. yeah. Appreciate it, yeah. Um, all you people out there are just going to be like raving over this. They're going to want to have you back. They're going to want to read your book. I'm going out to buy one of them. Life, myself, <laughs> seriously, yeah. Life in Strange Ways, available worldwide on Amazon. And now we're going to conclude the video, description box, links to all his stuff, his book and his social media. We're going to conclude this now because Anita's going to come in here now. You all right to just grab Anita? So we yeah. And she's going to talk about who she is and what her relationship is with Alan and what their project is that they're working on now. Yeah, my name's Anita Armstrong. Um, I'm the author of Life in Strange Ways and um, I've also wrote the scripts for the film which um, will be going in pre-production um, quite soon. We've got investors on board now, so it's all looking good. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Previously on our phone call, you said perhaps you're looking for people out there to be involved in some way. Is that still the case? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we're going, going to be needing um, a lot of extras, yeah. um, um, a lot of professional artists and supporting artists as well, but there will be announcements on um, Alan's Facebook page um, about where the auditions will be held, um, or where the um, some of the outside scenes will be filmed as well. Um, so, but I was doing it independently as um, an independent um, writer and producer. But we've got a big company on board now, so I've had to give a lot of um, you know. Well, actually, they they're going to be taking over producing it, co-producing it, and. I'm going to be doing script writing along the way and then eventually going to be um, doing the co-producing as well on the film. Fantastic. This is going to be a huge project backed by a big name that we can't say, so it's all yeah. legit and going ahead. And if people out there want to get involved, what is the best way to contact you? Um, 
Well, the thing is with Alan's Facebook page, it's constantly, you're only allowed 5,000 people. It doesn't do the um, the Twitter, because we, we don't quite, even I don't understand what what about Twitter. It's just really hard to, to, to get onto. But, uh, well, it's probably not, it's probably easy, but we, we don't know how to do it. But he's always got the 5,000, so it's quite hard. So the best thing to do, really, is if anybody's interested in, in the film, coming on board as an extra or wants to know more information, you can go to his page because there's updates on there. But is it OK to give my email address out? Yeah, what's going to happen is, under this video, there's going to be a box. So if you're on your phone, there's like a down arrow, you click on it and the box comes up. Or if you're on your computer, it says show more, they click on it. And whatever links or email addresses or any um, contact information at all you want will be in that box. Right, okay. But you're also, feel free to, if you want to just say your email address right now to the camera yeah. as well. It's yeah, okay. It's Anita Armstrong, lowercase or one word, 1010 at uk, And you can also go onto the website, which is www.planetearthproductions.uk. And the information about the film's on there as well. Okay, and is there anything else you want to say to the people watching this? Um, I just feel like it's going to be a fantastic film. Um, I'm not sure 100% whether it's going to be on cinema yet. We, we, we're aiming for cinema and, and the festivals, but we've just been offered a really good deal with uh, one of the big production companies, so it's looking like it's going to be going uh, down that road. But the film is going to be um, very gritty, very true. Um, it's going to be on the same par as Short Shot Redemption and um, a lot of the other really, really well-known films. It is a true film about Alan's life. Um, it's not just about the Strange Ways riots, it's about uh, the beginning of his life, how he became to get involved um, in the original crime and, and his life through um, his 32 years. And um, with, with the book selling so well worldwide, uh, there's a lot of interest in the film, so it's going to be um, a really good film to watch. Brilliant. And in conclusion then, Alan, um, the people out there are probably wondering how you're doing now and what you're up to. Do you want to just give a couple of minutes on how your life is now? Yes, um, I'm doing fine. Um, sometimes there's this misconception that <clears throat> somebody who served a, a lengthy sentence that you'll come out institutionalised. Yeah. But my behaviour is contrary to the fact. You know, I have a few quirky natures, and I eat with a spoon still. I eat out of Tupperware, even though I get a slap on the wrist for doing that. You know, I still wake up at five in the morning, you know, but there's nothing significant that could tell me to be institutionalised. Um, there's nothing out here that really perturbs me. I get tremendous support from Anita. You know, she's taught me a lot of things, puts me in a lot of directions, um, still directs me a lot. Um, and I must admit that life's rosy. Seriously, more rosy out here than it is in there. I think when you go through things and you lose your life and then you get it back and you like appreciate the small things. Absolutely. I mean, prior to your imprisonment and even when you're in prison, you know, you, you resent the fact that you, you, it's the simple things in life that are more precious rather than the big things, you know, and, you know, I need to come verify this, that upon my release, going for a lengthy walk through the forest, you know, I'm sniffing the trees and hugging them. And that sound, <laughs> might sound a little bit weird, but it's just great to do that. It wasn't hugging the trees, it was smelling the trees. Well, that smelling sounds, the trees. Yeah, that sounds weird. What was he doing? doing again? <laughs> and when you go out in the car today, you had a bit of a funny walk because of your exercise uh, routine. What are you doing these days? Um, I'm still training every, um, even though I get told off. But, you know, you hold as you feel. That's my motto. Um, I still lift a lot heavy weight. I still rip out a lot of heavy weight. Um, but I carry a few injuries with it. But that's inevitable throughout the years of training, wear and tear. But I'll never give up my training, you know, because it's part of my makeup and it'll be part of my makeup until the day I pass away. Yeah, he's got a few injuries at the moment. He's got Hercules tendonitis and things like that going on. So the doctor's told him to take it easy, but he won't take it either. Oh, no. Hence the way he's walking out of the no. car. You know, because I mean, he didn't walk like a, a bit like John Wayne. <laughs> oh, but um, it's not a swagger, by the way. <laughs> He does like to, um, we, well, we both like to go out and we like go going for walks. We, we like Cleveland, St. Hans, and we regularly go weekends. Um, we like Liverpool, he loves Liverpool, yes. yeah. So young people watching this, and there might be some school teachers watching this in the Manchester or in the North West, are you available like, to do talks to young people in schools and things like that? Absolutely. 
I mean, you know, I'm always available. Um, the opportunity is there for anybody that's interested in me coming down and doing a conference in respect of, you know, like um, where they've been, criminality, etc. cetera. Um, just ask and I'm available. So if you have enjoyed this video today, then please show your appreciation in the comments. Support Alan and Anita. Go over to the social media links. If you want to get involved in the movie, it's a unique opportunity. So we're looking forward to seeing what everyone has to say out there. Appreciate you coming on. Thank man. you very yeah, much. Cheers, Appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much. You. Yeah, and cheers as well, yeah. Anita. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers, thanks.